Welcome, welcome everyone to Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time, the latest platformer installation of the Crash Bandicoot series. Um, can I get a confirmation on who is the winning character? You absolutely can. It, it was very close between Coco and Crash. Crash came in at $60, but Coco wins with $600. <laughs> so disappointed in you guys. We're not the main anymore. Proud of you guys. <laughs> so obviously we're gonna name the file ESA, and I'm gonna do a. Actually, now that Coco's won, I'm gonna do a slight glitch, if you can call it that. I'm gonna prepare a save file, go into Bandicoot Battle two players, and to not spoil a lot of the game, I'm gonna pick the first level. And now what I'm gonna do is um, start off as Crash and immediately die as fast as I can. This is not part of the run, by the way. It's, it um, is not. It's, it, not. it's a glitch that lets you play as Coco in the first two levels, which is otherwise not possible. And now that I have Coco, I'm going to quit back to title. And according to the story, Coco is only available to play in level three. Uh, but now with the glitch, Coco can be played in level one and two. So if we're all ready to start the time in Three, two, one, go. All right, so starting off here, you will see Cookie do a lot of slide spins, which you should be familiar with at this point uh, in Crash games. That's what, and some variation of that is used in basically every Crash game. Um, and he will try and break the boxes as fast as possible. Boxes in Crash 4 are actually kind of like paper. They break extremely easily, so they don't stop you like you, for example, saw happen to Rico yesterday uh, during his run. Um, so yeah, most of the movement tech here will be slide spins. You can hover for a very long time over uh, a gap in this game, like, and it's uh, that is the purpose. Like, you're supposed to be able to do that compared to almost every other Crash game where you have some hang time, but not nearly as much as in this game. Um, they also uh, significantly uh, reduce the cooldown time between each spin. So in older Crash games, there'd be like a one second delay before you'd be able to spin again. And a lot of the movement tech in those games is advanced glitch tech. This is like the base movement of the game that the devs intended you to have. It's just that fast. And like really the movement in this game is just using your basic kit to its fullest potential. Yeah, what you saw there is the cookie waited until the end of a spin and then he jumped out of it. If you jump out of it that late, then you only get one jump, like the last part of a double jump instead of two jumps. But if you jump a bit earlier, then you can get two out of it. So we're going to see uh, both throughout the run. Um, other than that, our goal is to collect every uh, clear gem that is not inverted, because that is uh, how we... Uh, there's a categorized gems in this uh, in this uh, game. But inverted gems are clear too, but clear, all clear gems means all the normal gems. So he's going to go through all the levels and get uh, all six of the gems that you can get per level, uh, which has some requirements that we will see very shortly by now. Basically, just Wumpa Fruit, getting all boxes, uh, not dying. Uh, more than three times, and the last one was I uh, hidden gem. Hidden gem. Hidden gem. Also, so every every level has a gem that's just somewhere in there that you have to find. So yeah, the uh, the story of this game, uh, it actually, despite it being the most recent Crash game, they made it a direct sequel to Crash Three to just go back to the roots of the series. And the plot of it is at the end of Crash 3, as we saw yesterday in my run, is uh, the two villains, Cortex and Entropy, get trapped in you know, like a, a space-time prison. And they kind of just like waited it out until they were adults again. Uh, they've come back and now they're like tearing holes in the space-time continuum and they awaken the quantum masks. So Crash and Coco have to go find these four quantum masks and use them to stop them from you know, destroying all of reality in the multiverse. And each of the masks will also give you a special power that you can use throughout uh, throughout the levels. Uh, they have certain assigned points where they are usable and certain assigned points where they are not. You will see a few cases of where we use them past the point, but we'll mention more of that when it comes to it. You will see Cookie uh, collect Wumpa, like kind of 
not go out of his way, but kind of pick up what it in, what is in his way, like intentionally, because uh, there is a Wumper requirement, and some of these levels are quite hard. On you might be wondering why he's doing it in this order. That is because doing it in that exact order he did uh, unlock the red gem, and there is six of the color gems in four. this game. Four. To four. Four. Yes. Four. <laughs> They kept um, removing one color gem after every yeah, crash like game. Crash, crash 1 had 6 and yeah, 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 5, yeah, yeah. 4 has 4. Um, all, all the crash games mixed together for me. I'm so sorry, Chad. I'm so yeah. sorry. So the, the way the color gems are unlocked in 4 is it kind of harkens back to how you unlock them in Crash 2 where there's like some kind of hidden gimmick you have to figure out. Uh, they went very extreme on it. Um, they, they did They did give a hint right before that room. If you looked on the right side to the door, there was like a little drawing that like showed you the like the order you were supposed to step on the platforms. Um, so that's the red gem, and then there'll also be the green gem, the blue gem, and the yellow gem. And they'll just come up in certain levels. Uh, even though this is all clear gems, you do need to get the four color gems because the third to last level in the game, Toxic Tunnels, has a multicolored gem path that requires all four, and it does have crates in it and the hidden gem, so you need to uh, unlock that. I think I was just mixing with the six required yeah. uh, gems afterwards. It's 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 late. It's late. Uh, uh, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> this is also it's a much more densely packed game than any crash game before it. Like 106 percent of this, like it's commonly taken. You know, the new players just plainly and casually uh, upwards of 100 hours. To do. Um, and like all clear gems is kind of like the the happy middle ground between like an any percent and a full completion. It's kind of like the the classic completion category where you're just breaking every box in every level, but you're not like going through a lot of like repetition by just playing every level multiple times. Uh, so this is the first quantum mask. This is Lonnie Loli, and his power is phase shifting. So uh, if you press either of like the mask power buttons, the triangle or R2. Uh, certain things will phase into an alternate dimension or they will phase into this dimension and kind of just shift between them uh, There's a cool thing you can do where if you if you shift into a crate or if you if you shift a crate in while you're in it It will break um, And something else you'll see especially in the bonus round here is that if you press both mass power buttons at the same time You'll double phase crates, so they'll phase in and Im immediately phase out So for explosives It'll break them, but the explosion will be in the alternate dimension so you don't get hit by them. It's a very fast way to destroy TNT crates. And uh, these hangrail sections, it's actually like a recurring thing throughout the game where there will be levels where you hangrail for a little bit and break some boxes on it and then back to platforming. Uh, don't really know why they decided to add something like this, but it's a nice little break from an otherwise pretty intensive game. Yeah, like with a lot of like longer crash games, at least, uh, you know, when they're above this like two hour mark, it's like a two and a half hour run loadless. Um, usually like if you saw with like my Crash 3 run yesterday, there's a lot of levels that have like a lot of downtime to offset, you know, the levels where you have to be like 100% focused. This game is like two and a half hours and you're 110% the whole time. There's just a lot going on through the entire run. So having these like these small rail sections just like have some downtime for, you know, like maybe 10, 20 seconds is very appreciated. Now you're gonna see uh, what Rico talked about with the uh, with the switching into the faces and stuff. Uh, probably used in this, right? Yeah, Am he I... used it. He used it right there with yeah. the, the first stack of TNTs. He didn't do it on the the bottom stack below him because for some reason those TNTs do not like to cooperate with the double phase and they'll just kill you anyway. And you they're, can... they're like the only ones that act like that. You can see here, like he broke a box in the uh, the wheels to the left and then to the right when he got out of it and that is what most people miss when they first go through this level because uh, getting all the boxes in this game is actually extremely uh, difficult because most of the boxes are uh, or some of the le most of the levels have boxes that are extremely well hidden yeah i feel like the best way to describe like the philosophy of this game is that it takes every aspect of crash whether it's like good or you know, frustrating and just ups it to the extreme. So there's gonna be like a lot of hidden crates and it, it's like most of them aren't really like unfair, like with some intuition and just poking around, you can usually find them, but it's like the sheer quantity of them can be very draining. And like a key part of this category is really just knowing ahead of time where everything is. It's a lot of memorization. It can be a bit, uh, for me personally, when I played it casually, I played through it casually couple of times. 
uh, through completion. And that is not an easy task, but um, I think the issue with it as a first timer is more the fact that like you will always be alert, so you will be hyper focused all the time to try and not make this boxes that are out of your way. But most of them are not bad at all. So we're in the second world where uh, engine kind of is the like boss of this world and uh, it's very engine themed. You see like stickers everywhere and like uh, this mechanic vibe to it. This is actually a very cool themed level. I think in general Crash 4 has super cool themed levels. Yeah, the, the aesthetic and art style of this game overall is top notch. They really went hard on the presentation and it pays off. Uh, so this is the red gem path. Um, and again, like most, most Crash games, you need the colored gem to unlock this path. Conveniently, every colored gem path is unlocked or is available after the level where you get the gem in. So you never have to do any backtracking. Every single level in here, uh, barring an accidental like fourth death in our level, is only going to be visited once. And it's almost like uh, you get the gem in one hub and you're going to use it right in the next hub. With exception of only the, the blue gem. You saw Cookie use a slide double jump to kind of skip using that arrow crate to get to the upper portion. Uh, the, the slide jump in this game is unique in that it actually slows you down, which I guess is a compensation for like the extra height it gives. And it's it's pretty neat because it gives the double jump and the slide spin jump uh, a distinct use from just the slide jump by itself. Um, so it's kind of like ev every piece of Crash and Coco's kit just has a unique use and like none of it's really useless. A reoccurring thing that you're gonna see throughout this run is the fact that in the bonus they make you go from the start all the way to the end, all the way back to the start and then all the way back to the end. We're gonna try to mitigate that in some further levels with uh, uh, nitro bounces that we will explain that when it gets when we get closer and most importantly damage abuse. Now right here instead of using the normal path I can try to land on this shadow box. Oh, that's cool. The camera is not gonna move so I need to use the one uh, the box counter to make sure I break the three boxes that are off screen and then I'm gonna do the same here. There we go. That, that, that was awesome. Yeah. So for, for clarification, like I, uh, I used to run this category a lot. I, I previously had like the record, but that was like over a year ago. So like watching this now is like fascinating because it's evolved so much in just that one year alone. Like Cookie really pushed this category to its absolute limit. So, so that prompt that just showed up there at the beginning of Crash Compactor, Cookie grabbed like a like a VS VHS tape. Uh, that's a the flashback tape, which every Crash and Coco level has one, and you can collect it if you have not died before reaching it. It's kind of just an homage to the death routes from the older games, and they do unlock special like flashback levels that kind of like touch in on like the lore before Crash One. Um, but we don't do those levels in this category because they're just like an extra part of the completion that don't have any gems at all. So the first one in Crash Compactor is unavoidable; you have to collect it. Um, but every other one, like it's not gonna make a difference whether or not Cookie grabs it. So like if it's not on, in, like directly in his path, he'll probably just ignore it. Uh, this bonus is pretty uneventful, so we can fit in a couple of donations if we have any. Absolutely, I'd love to. We've got a five dollar donation that's coming from Tears of Hope, who says, "Good luck, Cookie. Show them the beauty of the ACG category." We've had a $10 donation come in from Microwave, who says, Good luck, Cookie. I love you. And we've had a $50 donation come in from Insert Logic, who says, Hashtag Shoki. Good luck to Cookie and the commentators. Cookie Naval has done so much for me and others in the scene, and I'm so excited to see him show all the effort he's put into this game. Let's go, Kings! Really appreciate it, Logic. Uh, coming up here... Uh, it's a very antique strat used in oh, oh, used in any percent, but actually useful in ACG. We're gonna skip using this elevator by bouncing on a TNT and doing a body slam because we don't have enough height. Otherwise, 
Yeah, when, when, when Cookie says it's an antique strat, um, so, or, like, a long time ago in ACG, we thought that in the left section you had to go up that just to break some craze. It turns out that Lonnie Loli actually doesn't cause phased out nitros to not detonate crates next to them, so you can ignore crates next to nitros even if they're phased out, and the detonator will still get them. Uh, and the body slam strategy did there used to be used in this level in any percent before we found a skip that just skips that entire side section. Wanna shout out Tearson uh, Logic real quick. They are, I believe, second and third place in this category with our boy Cookie here being the world record holder. Yeah, they're so. both very talented ACP runners. Logic is also a legend at many games. There's Kingdom Hearts 2, Spiral Reignited, Kane of Reg Prince of Spirits. He is just a, a gamer. An absolute Chad speedrunner. Yeah. And like he's, he's only been playing ACG for like a few months and he's already, you know, top level. So it, it's awesome to see them come in and support Cookie. Okay. Right uh, here, we're gonna come up to our second color gem. If we slide spin the controller, the the truck moves a little bit faster to blow up the nitro, and then we get the the color gem. That was the first color gem I found casually, and it was just complete accident. I just hit, I hit the trash can, and the car popped out, and I was like, "What is this?" Uh, we're gonna come up with the first boss. I'm gonna need a little bit of focus. I'm gonna talk a little bit beforehand. Um, casually, the boss takes like uh, around two two minutes and a half. There is a very extre extremely easy skip that reduces the boss to a minute and five seconds. I'm gonna go for a the extreme hard one uh, that cuts even 25 seconds, making the boss only 45 seconds. Um, engine is a boss that's hiding in a metal robot dr drummer, I guess it's his name. Um, and he uses his drumsticks to uh, bang on all sorts of drums. Uh, but what we can do here is go up to him and for some reason the drumstick has a hitbox and we can use that instead of doing the fight normally. That is first phase. That is the second phase. Gonna need to restart that. I'm gonna go for it a few times. It is very easy for that to happen or for the boss to soft lock. Uh, the boss will soft lock in the way that he will just stop drumming. So I cannot do anything at that point. That is the third phase. And now this first minion is going to do one damage, and one that's going to appear right here is going to do the rest of the damage. Some platforms are going to spawn in. And that is the boss. Very nice. Yeah. yeah that, that setup for the skip is definitely much harder than the old one. Uh, the, the old one is literally you do the first phase and get, make the robot vulnerable and then you just run up and slide spin them. And for some reason, hitting the robot twice just skips the next attacking phase. Uh, that one is like significantly easier, but like Cookie said, it loses like 25 seconds. Um, a little mention. Uh, at the end of uh, the level before Engine, he uh, hit the road. Um, you saw he was in a ball level, which is actually kind of like a tribute to uh, Wrath of Cortex, where you're in a ball for uh, four levels, I believe, if I'm, yeah. I'm not wrong. Um, and yeah, it is a very different type of ball level, but uh, it still is a bit of a fun, like, uh, should I say, nostalgia trip. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of cute little Easter eggs to yeah. older Crash games. Like, it's definitely, even though it, like, it takes place after Crash 3, they didn't forget, you know, everything that happened afterwards. Definitely a love letter to the franchise as a whole. Uh, something that Cookie did at the beginning, there was two flame crates surrounding an arrow crate, and you know, naturally there'd be crates above the arrow crate, but Cookie just didn't 
bounce on it. The reason was that there was uh, one of the seahorse enemies. He actually managed to like spin it in a way with a position where it sniped the crate above him. Uh, the way enemies move in this game is that like when, when you just hit them in a sp certain spot, they just move in a certain trajectory. So it's actually very easy and consistent to snipe enemies into crates like that. I want to shout out Booty Calls for being the first level in the run where we get the exact amount for the 80% whooper requirement. Not one more, not one less. The route that I'm doing right here with breaking all the boxes is exactly for for getting the exact requirement. I try to snipe that enemy. And now, as I was talking about in Crash Compactor, I'm entering the this bonus with two masks and to prevent from me going oh, I need that one. So I'm gonna damage abuse to not go all the way to the end to go back again because usually there's this nitro detonator and then you have to go back to get the, the reinforced crates with a body slam so i'm just gonna use the two masks that the level gives me to bypass that crate counter like delayed itself at the end and scared me yeah that's for i don't know why it's the only level or bonus where that happens Touching it on a bit on the, the Wumper Fruit, because they are required for collecting gems in this game, uh, every crate is 100% consistent on how many fruit it gives you, and uh, you cannot spin away fruit like you could in older games. This, uh, this game has two modes, there's Modern and Retro, and Retro has the classic life system, but Modern, which is what most people run on, just has an infinite life system. Uh, and because of that, the, the Wumpter Fruit needed another purpose besides giving you a life, so they made it a requirement for completing levels. So now that you saw there that the that the 80% Wumpter Gem only popped up after even I grabbed the, the end of the box gem. So now we have our first uh, alternate character to Crash and Coco. We have Hana Bandicoot looking a little bit different from uh, what we remember from the trilogy because something something plot wise she is from a different uh, uni timeline universe 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 yeah so uh, Tana's gameplay is a lot simpler than uh, really any other character in the game she you can run and jump and she has this grapple hook that you use to you know, latch onto walls and you can like hit enemies with them from afar. Um, otherwise, she's like a really straightforward character compared to honestly the other, the rest of them. Yeah, there's no any fast speed tech with this character like Crash and Coco have the slide spin. A lot of her moves that actually slows her down. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty much what it comes to having like playing fast with Tana is just movements optimization. And with these wall kicks that she does, I can pretty much the majority of them grab the second one and skip the first one. A cool little like skip save. Uh, Cookie actually skipped uh, when he jumped down. That's an elevator that has like a little mini cutscene, um, like this. Basically, you, you can see how move how slow this. Is. Yeah, so it's uh, faster to jump down, and he also skipped the uh, the wall. Like it was three, like left, right, left, and then up. And uh, as he said, he can skip a lot of those. And that was seen in action as he explained it. And then uh, he ran through the like the big lobster enemy uh, and just took the damage. You actually, you cannot carry masks out of levels uh, in this game. So if you leave a level, if you leave this level with a mask, you will enter the next one with zero. Uh, I think that was just a design choice to make it so you couldn't just like freely damage beasts through anything at the beginning of a level. Um, but he used the mask there to just run through the enemy because, again, everything Tana does slows her down. Her kick slows her down. So just by running through the enemy, it expends a mask that you're going to lose anyway and then just saves some small time by not having to use an attack. And now we have our first alternate timeline level, uh, which is what we call it. Uh, we start playing as the alternate characters, and then when we transition back to Crash, 
it's gonna play the same a same section of a level that we already played uh, with this level's case being hit the road and there's slightly different like box formation stuff throughout the level uh, in those alternate timeline levels I'm really still a bit stumped on why they did it this way because you like end up replaying like most of the levels because the character the alternate timeline character uh, parts are usually not as long as the main character part. Yeah, it, it it's interesting. I think it's a good idea that maybe, maybe you could use some better execution, but like it, it does let you use these characters a bit more often. And it is fun to get some variety. Yeah, and lore-wise, um, what these levels do is... Uh, so again, this is an alternate version of Hit the Road, which was in the previous hub, and if you remember, right before the ball chase section of that level, um, like something happened, and, and like there was like a exclamation mark question mark where Coco was like confused as to what happened, but just rolled within, just ran away from the, you know, the, the truck that was about to run her over. Uh, so these ultimate timeline levels, they explain what happened. So there's gonna be a cutscene right here, which we're gonna skip, but basically it shows Tana, you know, stopping this truck from just moving as fast as it can. Yeah, but as you can see here, this is basically the same as Hit the Road, but like a little different. There's like nitros now. Yeah, with this case, they just fit a lot of nitros, uh, but it's pretty much the same. So in case we have some donations, this would be the perfect time to read them. Absolutely, we do. We've got a $5 donation coming from RKG Game, who is asking me to do my best Neo Cortex impression. And I won't lie to you, I've just researched this and tried to. I'll try to do my best. Um, but great Uka Uka, it was that infernal bandicoot! <laughs> a $5 donation there, thank you very much. Uh, we have a $10 donation from Kiri33 who says, Hashtag Shoki, can't wait to meet Tim the Cat, pet the Schnurgle, and use Big Horn Energy. Or the artist, I guess. Good luck, Cookie! Definitely not the first one. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Jamie the Bunny who says, Wow, Cookie, Crash looks different today. Good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck! I didn't mean to rig the donation yesterday, by the way. <laughs> I see, Jamie. I'm going to get another one in while I've got a chance. $25 has come in from Lexi, who says, Cookie, I'm so happy to be here to watch in person. The best of luck to you on this run, and thank you, Lexi, for your donation. Now we're going to move to... Uh, Jetboard JD, which is pretty much the gatekeeper of early game. Up until the first checkpoint, literally every single movement that I do is on purpose to manipulate cycles. And there's also some very precise uh, movement in the bonus and throughout the whole level. Uh, which I hope I get it. If I die in the bonus while attempting it, I think I can still go it, go for it again because it involves a flame crate. Oh, well, flame crates are like that one on the left over there. I don't think we have touched upon the flame crates are always on a cycle. Uh, they start their cycle as soon as you load in the level as opposed to the majority of cycles, which is as soon as you get a little bit close, they start moving. Uh, so that's why flame crates are just super annoying. Very nice. And there we go. I I got the... Like, I took so long to get there that I lost the cycle and I could attempt that. Instead of waiting for the TNT, you can just activate both exclamation mark boxes. There are a handful of bonuses game as well that are homages to older bonuses. That one was an homage to Jaws of Darkness and Crash 1, so if you've played older Crash games and you're like, hey, that looks familiar, uh, it probably does. Now here I'm gonna try and jump on Nitro without taking damage, and this is the main reason why we play at 100, at least 120 FPS, because that's something very consistent that you can do at that frame rate. 
Yeah, high, higher FPS in this game doesn't affect speed at all. It just affects consistency. So it's something we allow just because otherwise it just be there'd be a bunch of strats that you know be a, a bit more miserable to do compared to you know if you have 120 or just uncapped frame rate. And there, I, there are also benefits to a lower frame rate that we'll see very soon. Chat, are you seeing this green gem? The game doesn't see it because it tells me to find it in another level. Just find it, bro. You just find. It. You're paying. A lot of attention, you might have seen some tentacles coming off from the background. That uh, tells us of a very ominous future. At least it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this level. I think it can't be understated, like, that's how tight these cycles can be. Like, early, like, routing for ACG, this level was considered an auto scroller because we just didn't think you could catch these cycles. And then Cookie just came in and was like, watch me. It involves using, some of the jumps involves using our masks, but I think skipping every one of those wooden platforms that you stand on is four seconds. So I just skipped uh, three of them. Here's more use of the, the double phasing, Monty Lily. In that case, it helps a lot because I don't need to waste time jumping on the TNT, because I always want to stay on the ground doing as many slice spins as I can. So after this jetboard section, we're actually going to come up on uh, what was, for the first like half year of the game, like a holy grail of skips that we really wanted to find, to the point that like it even had a bounty on it that was set by myself and a few other runners. Uh, and very fortunately, we did find it because it's very cool. This is Luis Skip. Uh, so this is the only level in the game that has a mini boss fight, which is, as Merc has alluded to with the tentacles, she's like a, a sea monster of sorts. But I'll let Cookie do this. Nice. Oh. Oh, don't do that. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. Back to 120. A little pause buffering there. And, uh, ah, yes, Luis. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, Luis. Yeah, so there, there's like multiple layers to that skip. Uh, the first one being like you saw him doing a pause buffer. You also saw him drop to 30 frames per second because that is a frame perfect trick. So the lower FPS makes it significantly easier. Um, but like if you pause buffer a, uh, on the same frame that you die uh, and then press triangle in the pause menu, you enter this zombie state where you kind of kind of just float around uh, and you can use that to just float right behind Luis and just skip the fight entirely. I see we are using the ZRTs now. Put a little bit of drip in Coco. So over here you see the second class. Um, which might seem familiar to like that tornado spin from Crash 3. Uh, but he works a bit different. He can uh, propel like green projectiles, I believe they're green. It yes. is, it is, it is. Um, and can spin for like an infinite amount of time. Like if you use it, you spin. Basically. He also breaks uh, reinforced crates. Yeah. yeah. So saves time over body, body slamming. Uh, but yeah, the, the name of this mask is Akano. So later on, if we say Akano, then that's what we're talking about. Um, the, the infinite spin is slower than your regular movement, so you don't want to be there forever, but it also lets you just fly for a long amount of time. Um, so there will definitely be very heavy use of it. Um, all, all of the quantum masks, um, Lonnie Loli to a lesser extent, but like the other three especially, so they have some very crazy tech and they really break this game wide open. Coming up is probably one of my favorite bonus to do. We can actually... Oh, I left the there. Oh. Um, we can go all the way to the end of this bonus and actually stand and skip having to wait for these TNTs. You can just stand on the edge and not trigger it. So it saves us not... It saves us time not having to wait for the TNTs to blow up. And then use these bouncy boxes to get up there. Also, if I body slam here, she'll <laughs> just stay there until we leave the bonus. It's only done. Uh, 
It's only a thing with this bonus platform for some reason. I kind of forget how good this game looks, like, as, as aesthetically. Yeah. Uh, compared to all other Crash games, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. It, it, like, the, the, you know, the, the environments, the character models, everything just looks top-notch. I would, I would say the one Crash game that is comparable in quality to the art style would probably be Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. I also forget how good this game looks, because I play in low settings. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he plays in low settings, and when you do that, the, the water becomes, like, translucent to opaque, so I just always poke fun at Cookie while he's running, or he's, like, playing with milk water. <laughs> there we got uh, Potion Commotion, Reminds which is another, more. like, timeline level where we Coco, uh, Tano for the beginning of it. It's also his house to uh, the, the greatest line of dialogue in any form of media. Coming up right here. Chat, show me those ayaya emotes. <laughs> and here there are a lot of like uh, boxes to the side where you gotta use like R2 uh, to break them. Yeah, there, uh, there was a lot of those in uh, Truck Stop also that we kind of just glossed over. Yeah, I think I had to go through this level like five times the first time I did it. So it's like, especially because like the, the the coloring is very orange brown, so the crates blend in for like how, how like that's a very easy one to miss. This is a level where knowing crate counts is very important. Like if you have, I think it's 31 here. You found everything. I'm not too sure. Usually when I have the 16 at the box counter. Yeah, we're fine. 31 was correct. That's one of the ones I memorized. Yeah, now we're just doing uh, this level or half of it uh, again. So uh, we could probably fit in a couple donations. Thank you very much. I first want to shout out Lexi, who just jumped in behind and started waving on the uh, behind you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the hype going there. We love to see it. We have had a $5 donation from Kesson Chu, who says, Bosso tele cookinevo. Cheers from Brazil. We've had a $20 donation come in from Philip Rodriguez, who says that moment when your favorite crash speedrunner is at ESA, you can't help but donate. And we have another $20 donation from KP195, who says, hashtag Shoki, yo, let's go cookie. Really hyped and watching this run live. Shout outs to Merkaz and Rigo as well. Thank you everybody for your donations. Keep them coming in. I have to wave with my left hand because my right hand's off camera. <laughs> also shout outs to KP, it's another ACG runner. I always have to point this out. Uh, cause one, once I was verifying one of the very first run that KP submitted, um, he forgot a box in the second level and just did not bother to restart the run. <laughs> he just continued. I respect it. Yeah, you see the level, the boxes has changed, uh, quite drastically in this one actually. <laughs> like. It a lot uh, of flame cards. Yeah. Um, but other than that, the the level itself is the same. It's just the, the box is big. After this level, though, we're coming up on a very interesting one uh, called Dragon On. And uh, it is the level that houses the blue gem. And the, the gimmick for the blue gem in this game is exactly the same as the one in Crash 2, if you're familiar with it, where you have to beat the entire level without breaking a single crate. Uh, Dragon On is a difficult level, so that is a notorious uh, like challenge level for a lot of players. Um, but you'll probably notice at the start here that Cookie is gonna not really care about not breaking the crates. Yeah, who needs the blue gem? Yeah, I don't know. We said we needed it, but uh, we don't care. At least if you're playing casually and you're not breaking any boxes, you can at least use the bonus as a checkpoint. Because that's something they kept from the Insane Trilogy. You can just enter the bonus, immediately die, and that will count as a checkpoint. So every time you break a box accidentally, you don't need to go all the way back to the beginning. I'm running on a very tight cycle, because there's this flame crate cycle that I want 
can try and make. I should be fine for it. A lot of tight cycles and a lot of very awkward geometry in this level. There, there are death triggers everywhere here. Like, if he just hits one of these pops in the wrong way, he can die. So you saw Cookie use, uh, actually, like, use the momentum from uh, jumping on a box to gain more momentum with uh, Akano. And that is used uh, multiple times during the run, and uh, especially, like, a lot in any percent as well. Yeah, um, there, there's a lot of, especially a lot of the early skips when the game was new were very revolved around Akano. There's been plenty of skips with the newer masks or the later masks since then, but like Akano is still very vital to the run. Yeah, Akano is very powerful because if you can, if you combine it with literally every single thing that you can do, it just amplifies that movement by a lot. So if you as Mercus was telling you, uh, if you use a Kano, just as soon as you bounce on the box, you will just go flying. Using this mask to snipe this enemy. Slid under that gong to not get hit by the shockwave. Cookie, miss the box. Uh oh. Uh, Okay, you weren't supposed to break any boxes uh, on the blue gem level. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll go back for the boxes. Are you gonna unbreak the boxes? Man? Oh, there we go. Wait, where are you going? What are you. What? This doesn't seem correct. Oh! Yeah, so uh, that's the blue gem skip. Skip, blue gem early, something. Um, yeah, that was. I think that was found on accident by Trobotech where like, he was just messing around with the level and then got out of bounds, and it turns out if you don't break every crate, or if you break a crate, the blue gem's just hiding under the floor, so you can just grab it like that, and then with a slide jump into a Kano, you can just hit the end of level trigger from below. I really cannot remember when or who it was found by, but I remember it was early enough for me to still be learning all the skips and l actually learning that, uh, so it, could, it can't have been that far into the yeah, lifespan. <laughs> it was definitely big. It was a good like one and a half minute time save in this category, because before we would you know go through the whole level, get the gem death abuse, and then play it again. This game was super broken, literally one week after it released, but all the skips that got found. Def definitely gave the game its own unique personality that set it apart from previous Crash games, which is what you love to see from any new game. I would rec I would definitely recommend, if you haven't seen any speedruns of this, to also check out the any percent speedrun, because it is extremely different and extremely uh, has a lot of very cool glitches in it. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a... It's a Uncommon case of uh, the any percent run in Crash being just as entertaining as completion. Oh yeah, this level is off balance. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have too much to say about this level in, uh, like specifically in ACG, but like as an overall level, I think this level is uh, really cool. Also, again with the with the callbacks to previous bonus level, this one is. The Tana bonus in Sunset Vista Crash 1. This level is also a little bit tight on Wumpa for the 80% requirements, but we should be fine now. You didn't test for the hostile check? Dude. Not gonna lie, I actually forgot. I said I was gonna <laughs> go for that, but I forgot. The, the checkpoint he broke, sometimes it just like holds the hitbox of the ghost enemy before it, and if you break it, you just get hurt. Um, so the hostile checkpoint. So yeah, this is like the one like side path really kind of specifically for a hidden gem uh, Fun fact there's actually like a weird out of bounds skip You can do later in the level that lets you grab that gem without going through the path, but At least at the current time. It's not worth going for I don't know like if it's been optimized to the point where it might be faster But at least like when I was actively running this it was actually slower to do that skip because the path is really quick yeah, so far it's it's not only extremely difficult to do, uh, you need to get it like pretty much first try to, I think, even save any time. Uh, right here, I'm gonna do a little bit of setup. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna break a few boxes here, or all of them, and I'm gonna try and make this next 
auto scroller section, or what it would be auto scroller section, not in auto scroller. Oh. Had a brain for it. I can fuse it with this part. Oh. I'm running on three deaths, so I'm not gonna go for that again. Yeah, so that, that's a very hard uh, cycle to catch. I saw Cookie do this yesterday, and I was actually that was something new to me, and it, it did actually look extremely hard. Yeah. And it also, because of H ACG, is like extremely punishing. Like you cannot have more than three deaths to get all the gems. Uh, it's not really worth it to uh, to try for that. It's because uh, you would have to redo the entire level to get that. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the few instances in this uh, in this run. Where, what? Wait, what? That okay? Uh, well, man, off balance is so good. We just got to do it again, man. Well, I guess I can showcase oh. a skip. The, the any percent skip. skip, which is awesome. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, th this this is one of the few levels where there's a death abuse strat that actually produces good cycles. Um, most other levels, like cycles, are catchable without a death abuse, but that's a rare one where you actually do want the proper setup. Because if you miss the cycle, or if you just, or if you're trying to go for what Cookie was going for, the cycles just are very slow and don't line up. There we will see like five out of six and how it looks. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, it, it, he did finish the level instead of retry, like restarting, because now he can just like blast through it instead of uh, thinking about any of the other requirements he yeah. doesn't have to die it, three times. It definitely saves time to finish the level and just do it do an any percent pass over restarting the level and doing the entire gem pass again. I also gotta say that last death was extremely unfair. So Yeah, that that was uh Sometimes I, I don't agree. <laughs> sometimes I felt like uh, when I play this that uh, the walls for both Tana and like Trash and Coco can not like stick you to it, but it I also, I've not played it nearly as much, so I don't know oh. how consistent that is, but I feel like it happened to me like a few times, but that might also be a skill issue. That, 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 one, that was definitely a rare case of, I, I, I think the game just like was being rude. <laughs> um, that is one of the reasons why I also have a pretty, uh, what's the word? Lenient? Uh, big estimate. Yeah. Because it's just that easy to lose a lot of time. It's very easy to snowball off of a single death, and once you hit four, that's like at least a few minutes gone. Play. The game just wanted to uh, show off some any percent stuff. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so he's going over the trigger here that takes away Akano, because it's very crucial to the last part of the skip. Here you see some uh, boost with Akano by using the wall just a wall running pads. Uh, you're gonna see it here too. This is a skip found extremely early into the game's lifespan. But yeah, like it has, first week has become easier with time. I feel like there this is go. like the post. I feel like that's the poster child skip of any percent. Like when people think of any percent, that's the skip they think of. Because yeah, it was like the first. It's the first yeah. one, and it's so it just skips the last like 30 seconds of the level. Uh, so if you thought that was cool, definitely check out any percent. There's a lot of levels with stuff like that. They have a Brio, which in a way is extremely similar to Brio in Crash 1. Uh, he throws out uh, slimes and potions. and uh, So yeah, in a way it is very similar, but also different. So you got to bounce the slime back to him and uh, that's it. Not much to this fight. Unfortunately, it's the only boss that doesn't have a speed tech. Entropy, or the fourth boss, also doesn't have a speed tech on PC because there's a particular uh, skip you can only do on console. But yeah, Brio is definitely suffering from not having any speed tech, so it's pretty much a big auto scroller. Um, so the only optimization that you can do is now he's going to turn into his monster face. And the goal is to knock him out of the platform. So what you want to try and do is just uh, lure him to the edge because when he gets confused, you just want to do one single push. And that is pretty much it. There's also a weird thing here where like, if he's at 
if he's close to an edge and you hit him and then immediately go out of the Kano, for some reason he gets hit again. Um, so it's just instead of having to hit him in twice, you can only hit him once and it'll work out. Like that. Kinda looks like you just pushed him far back, but he actually like he got like two pushes. Yeah. I have no clue why that happens. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a thing. I, I don't know. Also, this song is like a really good rendition of Rio's theme. I feel. Yeah, that was the second boss fight. And now we unlock the definitely best part of the game. Definitely not biased at all. Everyone loves this part of the game. Right? <laughs> yeah, so the, the, when you beat Brio, you unlock the inverted mode, which is uh, mirror mode with a filter, and it comprises of over 50% of uh, 100%. So, uh... Not the best reception. Uh, but yeah, now we're going into the next hub. Offbeat is going to be pretty much the only level where I want to say there's this, all the cycles spawn in from the beginning. And I think that's pretty much attributed to the game's cycles being tied to the music. This is also a kind of cool level because it's uh, music themed. I personally despise this level, but I know a lot of uh, runners and uh, crash enjoyers in general really like this level. A uh, aesthetically and like from a casual perspective, this is one of the coolest levels in the game as, as a speed runner, like in every category. Again, because as Cookie said, the cycles are tied to the music. Uh, it is very, very frustrating because like a single mistake, a single miss cycle can lose you like at least 30 seconds. Yeah, other than that, it's just a pretty, uh, pretty cool platforming level. I do like watching it. I just don't like playing. Yeah, this, uh, this entire hub is a shout out to like New Orleans and, uh, you know, Mardi Gras, which I actually was notified before the run it started today. So uh, today is Mardi Gras. I guess we're celebrating. Yeah. I think I'm already a little bit too slow to hit the god cycle. Ooh. Ooh. I should not have done that. It keeps... I think... I don't know if it's just me, if it's just placebo, but I think that... Um, when you spin, even after the spin animation ends, Crash or this instance, Coco still has an active hitbox. Yeah, that, you know, that's uh, entirely possible. Honest. Coco has a thing with that in Twalk, so I assume it's it's fair to assume that she has in this too. If they're both Crash 4. There we go. I'm gonna try and use the Lonnie Loli tech, I guess you could call it that, that we introduced. Real grind. Also, one thing that uh, I see a lot of casual players don't seem to know is that in metal crates, metal arrow crates, if you spin as you land on them, you will not get a bounce out of them. Yeah, it's something they carried over from the original trilogy and the Unsane trilogy that is uh, very useful for a lot of bonuses. So yeah, even though the masks have their uh, uh, their hubs, which they are introduced to, like their warps or whatever I should call them, uh, they are used in levels that are not directly tied to where you found them, even though they are mostly used in the levels where you found them, I believe. Yeah, like the, the, the hub after you unlock a mask, it's very heavily focused on that mask, and then they'll make appearances later on as well. I don't know about you guys, but these cubes' faces kind of remind me of the minion from the Swiggle Wume. <laughs> I mean, now that you say that, I guess <laughs> I can. I you, you're, see never, it. you're never gonna unsee it now. I can't believe you decided to ruin this first. I, I, I couldn't settle with just making Cookie play as Coco. So. Now, chat, show me all of those dance gem please emotes. Show me also those ESA plums if you're sub to ESA Marathon. 
we could probably fit in a few donations here during this grind rail section. It's a good like minute long, yeah. Yeah. I would love to. They are coming in thick and fast. There's a lot of love for this run, I can tell you that now. We've had a five dollar donation come in from McCrody who says, Please do Crody skip. PS Merkaz. The emote. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a five dollar donation coming from Silver One O Six who says, Yo, Wumper League? Yo. <laughs> Yo. We've had a five dollar donation coming from RKG Game who simply says <laughs> <laughs> Another five dollar donation coming from a Chi at Kitsunova who says, Good luck, Cookie, I'm proud of you. And the last one for now, I'll give you another five dollar donation from Freeze Champ who says, Man, who would have thought I finally get to see my boy, my best bud, Cookie, showcasing the potential of such an amazing game. I mean, it's it's not TWOC, but you know, you know. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> I can't wait to see you again soon. Thank you, everybody, for your donations. They're coming in thick and fast. I will get to them as I can. I promise you, every donation will get read out. I thought you were talking about me, Freeze. I thought, I thought we were something, okay? <laughs> so we do really appreciate everyone donating and the extremely supportive uh, Clash community because there's been already been so many people donating uh, to Rico's and Alapos and Cookies Run. And uh, we did also hit $49,000 just a few yeah. minutes ago, which is awesome. I, I like how we grew <laughs> silent right when he said the word. Uh, but yeah, this is the second uh, alternate character. This is Dingo Dial, uh, who since uh, Crash 3 has uh, retired from villainy and now owns his own diner. And as you can see, COVID hit Dingo Dial a bit too. Yeah. L literally, the diner just exploded. I love the faces on these bats, by the way. Um, yeah, no, D Dingo Dial's uh, got a... a very interesting kid. Um, uh, he's got he replaced his flamethrower with this uh, vacuum that he can also use to hover. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool movement you can do with him. Um, there, there's also a there's a small skip you can do to get that gem a little earlier, but it's like finicky and it saves like, like two seconds, so it's not really worth going for. And if you do the skip, there's part coming up. Uh, that target where the Golden Wampa is standing on just deloads, so you have to do this jump to the Golden Wampa just blind. Yeah. Also, if you notice, every time I jump, I have a yellow circle underneath me that the devs kindly added to make some jumps a lot easier. And if you notice, uh, Dingo, Dingo's yellow circle is way bigger than the rest of the characters. Big boy. His hitbox in general is, uh, like, his spin is extremely, like, huge hitbox on, too, because you can see him uh, cookie break some of the... There's these mixers, I guess, like, uh, that are throughout the level. I'll mention when I come to it. Might be a better word for it, but, yeah, Cookie will actually use the tail end of Dingo's uh, hitbox for tail to spin them instead of uh, doing what is intended, which I believe is using these Nitro uh, TNT crates to yeah, uh, yeah. explode them. Yeah. He's also used them to break open gates, which are also supposed to be used with the TNT. Um, but Dingo's just that powerful. Yeah. yeah. You can even just casually spin TNTs and Nitros and not take damage if you're from a safe distance. Yeah. The, the range of his spin attack is so huge that like you just not be in the range of the explosion. Here is the usage of it coming up real soon. I ping this enemy to the Golden Wampa. Yeah, I like that. Oh, that's new. We used to go around it. All I need for these TNT boxes to count is i go underneath the enemies and let them drop the TNTs. Bit of a gaunt over here. I didn't get the snipe. There's quite a lot going on at the, this end section. There's also almost 400 yeah, boxes. Yeah, I was about level. to mention the, the staggering crate count. Um, with Dingo, because his hitbox is so huge, they, they clump a lot of crates together. So even though it, it seems like, oh my god, they just like increased the crate count dramatically, it's still like largely similar to structure to the older games. It's just 
they had the means to put like a bunch of the crates together more than they could like on the PS1. Oh, not the right level. So uh, every time you unlock a new character, you immediately unlock one of their alternate timeline levels. So this is a Dingo Dial version of uh, Booty Calls. Uh, I like to call this level Flame Crate Simulator, which uh, will make good. sense when you get to the Crash and Coco part. This is a Dingo section of this level. It's also extremely short. <laughs> yeah, like it, the entire this portion, I think, is like 40 seconds. Also right here, another usage of Dingo's big hitbox. I can just land on the first uh, box, and if I spin on time, I can actually break the TNT that's underneath me. Yeah, it's something that will come up um, a lot in a later Dingo Dial level as well. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I believe this is just very... Somewhat different, but very similar to booty calls, so probably a good spot for a couple donations. I would love nothing more than to read out some more love for you. $50 has come in from RKG Game again. The artist costume is cool and all, but I want to see the totally tubular skin. Thank you, RKG Game. I'm backing that up. A $8 donation is coming from Cassie Cow, who says, Hashtag Shoka, let's go cookie. You got this less than three. Now right here we have probably one of the worst uh, bonus to do casually because the intended way is for you to go back and then you have to go through this metal crate that's constantly jumping. So using what I just said, we can spin on this one to not get a... We can spin on the metal crate to not get a, a bounce and then we can safely make that cycle. Uh, if we just look down there, you notice why Rico calls this level the Flame Crate Simulator. Because just, just look at this. It's just a mess. <laughs> yeah. Fl flame crates are not particularly the most well liked aspect of this game. Of this game, at least from a speedrunner perspective. Uh, and uh, this is the perfect snapshot as to why. Although Cookie went through that very quickly so <laughs> you do add like a bit of uh, complexity to it too like they they add another set of cycles to like make too right yeah like so. from a Rome's pr perspective like they add some depth like even casually it's kind of just like you can on them but yeah I'm also backing up uh, total there I didn't want to use it because I know that's like that's your icon uh, that's fair. I respect that. Which one is it? That one. There we go. Oh, yeah, Shoutouts to uh, the Steam version of this game where uh, there's uh, there's a skin that you can only unlock by connecting an Activision account to the game, and you cannot do that on the Steam version. So it's not in the Steam version. It's the, like, the gamer outfits that uh, Crash and Coco have. Uh, but yeah, this is Run and Bayou, and if you... May have noticed at the very beginning before Cookie skipped the opening cutscene, uh, the yellow gem is just literally right there. That's probably the one that you're most likely to find on accident. That or the green gem. Yeah. And here you have to be kind of fast because these are timer crates that run out. Um, and if you miss any of them, you kind of just have to go back immediately uh, just to the start. Oh, that was close. Where are these enemies supposed to be? The ones carrying the nitro? I think they're supposed to be bats. Um, because like in this story, the the rival restaurant that blows up Dingo's Diner is like a bat restaurant. Uh, but this is another uh, homage bonus. Uh, this one to G Wiz from Crash 3 that we saw yesterday. Tried going through the middle of the of the jumping crate, but I misjudged the cycle. Yeah, th thankfully, like most Crash game, every Crash game really, uh, bonuses do not count towards 
death so in older games you wouldn't lose a life in this case his death counter did not go up for that death in an older patch that used to remove the ability to get the flashback tapes they fixed that like pretty early on is that actually i think yeah i think it was like like a day one like week mm -hmm. one patch they fixed it coming up is pretty much the only usage of a death abuse for a collectible you can pretty much just collect the hidden gems and die and they will still uh count for the end you still the game still counts them as that you collected so it's just a little bit easier to yeah uh, the way you're supposed to get that hidden gem is uh, behind the barrels to the right of the checkpoint. There's an exclamation crate that triggers a you know a bridge of metal crates below the hidden gem. So you're supposed to grab the hit that, grab the hidden gem, and then go back to the main path. But if you just you know grab that in death abuse, it saves a few seconds. And I guess this vehicle is a bit of a throwback to Crash 2 as well. Yeah, we we saw this in uh, Jetboard Jetty, and then we see it again here. Yeah. And we will also see it in the next level. I'm gonna try and use this mask to damage abuse on these TNTs. Normally, there's these TNTs that block uh, the way of the both. But if I can just do that, um, I don't think we have touched actually. Uh, coyote time. Uh, even if I'm on air or if I go off a ledge, I still have time to do some inputs, and with the case of that TNT, even if I spin the TNTs and I was on air, I still have a few frames to input a slide, uh, so we can use that master damage abuse to not have the boat wait the three seconds that the TNT uh, costs. I didn't mention it briefly in the beginning, but not as nearly as oh, okay, I did now. Okay. Yeah, Kaido Ka time definitely comes up a lot to make these like really big jumps that you think wouldn't be possible, but like combined with the uh, slide spin, it's uh, quite powerful. Especially a few um, uh, tapes levels where there are gaps that you're supposed to slide over, which isn't really a thing in other crash games. Yeah, the, not to that degree. Yeah, the, the Coyote time is very intentional. The the devs mentioned it in one of the IGN devs reacts that it was something they put in on purpose and they actually called it Coyote Pun. So. And uh, finishing this hub unlocks the third Quantum Mask, but before we see any of that, uh, there is one more level in this hub, the alternate timeline version of this level. Right then, need a hand. We're gonna get a glimpse of the next hub world, but we still have another level to finish. Best hub world. That's by far my favorite. It's a pretty good hub. Yeah, it was one of the one. It was two of the three <laughs> levels. Two of the three, levels, yeah. two of the three demo levels uh, that we got. About a month early? Was it more? Yeah, than it, was a, it was a couple. It was like a, a couple a of weeks of, to a month. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think at least me and you speedrun the demo. Oh, I, I grinded it super hard. Yeah, yeah. You I, 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 I wasn't going to mention it because I didn't want to flex, but the devs react was my run. <laughs> <laughs> there was also a demo uh, devs react before the full uh, yeah. run that came yeah. for any percent. It's a pretty good video and it's worth uh, giving a watch. I don't remember, did you do much demo runs, Cookie? I didn't do any of the demo. No, okay. I could not remember, because I do remember like we were quite a few people who did. And yeah, uh, two of the levels coming up in the next hub was actually a part of that, so that is two of the levels that uh, I really like. Well, what, one, of them, one, one, of them. One, <laughs> one of them will have to will come much It's in that hub, but we have to revisit it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. last character. Um, but yeah, this is uh, no Dillo Dallying. Again, it's the alternate timeline version of Run It Bayou. And this has one of the longer, like, non Crash and Go Go sections. Uh, which makes it a bit less egregious than a lot of the other timeline levels because it also spits you out at the very end of Run It Bayou. So this one's not too bad in that sense. But I think I think this level has the highest crate count. It's like 502. 500. Yeah. Two, yeah. So, uh, quick question round two. All three of us. What's your least favorite character, extra character? Tana. Um, 
I think it would have to be uh, Cortex, just because of the way that, or he just doesn't work. And for me, it's Dingo. Go fast. <laughs> so we all have a different. Opinion. We all have a different opinion on it. I, I understand the disdain for Cortex, which I guess we spoiled the uh, the last alternate character. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. From a speed perspective, I just don't find Tottenham particularly interesting. Um, Cortex definitely has some finickiness to him, but I think his tech is cool, so I kind of just turn a blind eye to that. But I, 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 un I understand the disdain for Cortex, for sure. He requires a lot of precision in a game that is already very precise and punishes you for not being precise. Now we're back again on the auto-scroller boat, and the ending is pretty much identical, just with a few extra crates. So this is the perfect time to fit some donations if we got any. Oh, thank you very much. We have a few. They're still coming in thick and fast. A $25 donation has come in from Satoris, who says, it's incredible how Cookie Naval is playing a two-hour, 45-minute run with the movement accuracy and intensity of a single-level time attack. And I can only agree. Thank you, Satoris. A $5 donation from Spaghetti, who says, good luck, Cookie. I'm so glad more people get to see how good you are at this game. And congrats to all of the runners and commentators that got accepted to ESA. Hashtag Shoki. We'll probably fit one or two more. Oh, thank you very much. A $25 donation from Swift Shadow says, Good luck, Cookie. Run has been fantastic so far. Keep it going. And a $10 donation from Major Foley who says, Defeated again. This is not fair. Love me some Crash Bandicoot. I do want to touch on that comment about how Cookie is doing a two and a half hour run with the precision of like single seven because that that really is the case. Like I mentioned earlier, this this is a very high octane run for the entirety of it. Like you've seen, like there's been very little downtime. Oh, uh, but yeah, this is uh, Snow Way Out. This was like this was like the most prominent demo level, uh, and it's definitely one of the coolest design ones. Uh, so this mask is Kapunawa, and her power is slowing down time. Uh, there, there's a really cool speed tech that, like, you're seeing very small glimpses of it here that Cookie's using. It's it's a lot more prominent in any percent because in any percent you actually drop the frame rate to make it more, more powerful. Um, but it's called the Time Warp, where if you press Triangle and R2 at the same time, you immediately go in and out of the time slowdown. It actually, like, pushes your character forward a little bit. And it's stronger the lower your frame rate is. So in any percent, you actually intentionally drop to 30 for... Like, most of this hub to just fly through the levels. Uh, in ACG, because you have to break crates, it isn't as useful to drop to 30, so I'm assuming Cookie stays at 120 for the consistency of the inputs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And it's also one of the reasons why, uh, or the main reason, actually, we capped uh, speedrun submissions at 30 FPS. Yeah, that, like, you cannot go lower than 30 FPS. That's the lowest the game natively lets you do, and in, like using like your graphic card settings to force uh, like lower than that for one. Mad props to being able to play the game in that, but it would also be horrendously unfair. So, and a little fun fact: that cutscene uh, that Cookie just got used to be skippable in the demo, where we would jump on off the side and jump around it. But when the devs react for the demo came out. Uh, they literally responded to it with, "Oh, it's that thing we yeah, fixed." Yeah, I was so, I was so sad. Uh, I was like, I just want this to be in the run because it was so cool. So it was just a small, like, three, four seconds, maybe. Yeah, like, it, was but it, it was cool because it had like a visual bug. Also, like the, because in that section, like the ship blows up, uh, and like there's no hitbox on the ship, but like the ship would remain solid and you just like went through it like a ghost. Uh, Cookie's very like craftily using the time here like because you're supposed to freeze time and like walk through these like falling platforms and like he's freezing them in a specific spot where he can move while they're falling and then land on them when he needs to this level is so cool yeah uh, this, this is definitely like some peak level design in the game in a game that has a lot of really good level design I, I think that's really what makes crash 4 so solid even just as like you don't even have to do like a full completion um, it stands really strong as a, you know, just beat every level kind of game because the level design is just that crisp. Like, they really went all in on just having really fun platforming. Suki's really zooming through this run and goes faster than, uh, than I can remember. 
Probably because you're slightly better than I am. But uh <laughs> It's pretty alright. It's not like the full record by like like at least six minutes or something. Still trying to convert Murkaz into learning ACG. Uh, and I'm gonna convert you guys into learning to insanity. Uh, soon. Okay. Oh, soon? <laughs> you want me to teach you stuff later? Uh it's a should I say? Uh preview for next DSA. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a uh, Stay Frosty. I don't know if this is still a thing, but uh, like when I was active in this game, uh, the nickname for this level was Stay Cursed. Because uh, it's, I don't know, things just go wrong in this level. I mean, that's pretty much, yeah. It's In this dimension, this is pretty much the the level where everything just goes wrong. I find it so weird. It's such a like straightforward level, but it, I, I do agree. It, like Everything goes wrong here, but it's such a like straight, forward technically a straightforward level that's, that's the anomaly is that like on paper it's it's so easy yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you do a run and it, it never goes right and it is one of the shortest levels in the entire game yeah yeah right here i'm gonna try to jump on this guy's head to make it to these platforms above that, that saves using the arrow crate that's down there that that's a really annoying jump to get with the arrow crate so, using the scientist just saves you the trouble with that. Um, ice hair also speeds you up quite a bit when you like slide swim. Yeah, the the ice physics in this game are actually pretty well done. Uh, ice physics are uh, a very mixed bag in the Crash series. Um, like I get uh, like the Insane Trilogy is a good example of ice physics that are very funky. Uh, but here they're like pretty 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 solid. Yeah, pretty much it's the only uh, time where you don't want to be spamming slide spins because you just get the full momentum for, for a slide spin on ice. So whenever you're on ice, you just want to slide spin once, and that's it. And that's the frosty. Already over. Crash 4 in general moves like pretty well. Like casually, I think it's the one that like feels the most responsive. I, I do think it has it has the finest like movement in terms of like for one, you have more options than you do in any other game. Yep. Uh, in the speed run, that can be annoying because like with so many options, there's so many potential for errors. But like casually, you just have so much control over your character. It really plays well to complement the levels. But it's also very different from the others in terms of moving. So if you're not used to it, it will probably take you some time to get used yeah, to it. Yeah, it feels very wild when you first get used to it, but or when you first try to play it. But when you get a hang of it, it it's such a clean game. Yeah, this level is uh, Bears Repeating. And there's a couple cool uh, Easter eggs here. First one is coming up with that yellow gem path over there. It should remind you of a certain Crash 1 level. So if it's it, oddly familiar. <laughs> if it doesn't, then you should probably replay Crash 1. Or, 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 or don't. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love Crash 1. Uh, but yeah, no, this is a uh, shout out to the bridge levels, Road to Nowhere and the High Road, which are, uh, especially in the Insane Trilogy, quite infamous for their difficulty. They're also they're, pretty hard than the original Crash 1, but... They're the Dark Souls of platform, yeah, right? Yeah. Find the hidden yellow gem. <laughs> Why didn't you do that, man? It so is so is weird that like it says the level or it says the message after I'm done with the path. Is it? Is it because you like you go close to the platform? Like, is it supposed to? Uh, it, like, it, they they aren't uh, counting on you having it by the time you get it. I, I think the prompt is, the prompt is there for, for when you get close to it, and I guess it just doesn't have a trigger for knowing you already have it. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but also, like, right in that section, Cookie did a weird uh, jump on, like, the side of a crate. There's just a ledge there for some reason, and it lets him skip going around. And then he froze time right when he got Kapunawa to stop the icicles from moving from their starting point, and it let him skip a bit more of the side scrolling to the left. This is where there's a, there's a 
dupe, right? No, it's uh, uh, the, the it, level it, after. Yeah, yeah, in the timeline one. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that'll come up in the next level. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if I remembered the right layout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, as evidenced by the name of the level bears repeating, this level has polar. Also, uh, if you played this game on release, you might remember the hitbox oh. for polar in comparison to the crates uh, was uh, not great. <laughs> It was extremely precise. Yeah. Yeah. It was just uh, you did not have a large hitbox. Yeah. This is one. This is one of the only patches they did that applies to every version of the game. They fixed this because it was probably the single most complained about thing. Where, like, if you were not like dead center on these two by two stacks, you would like hit three of them, hit two of them, hit one of them. Uh, they they changed it so that if you hit any of the four crates in the two by two formation, it breaks all of them, uh, which makes this level significantly less frustrating. Um, the way Polar moves is very odd if you're used to the original trilogy or the Insane trilogy. I actually find that um, instead of like veering hard left or hard right on like the D-pad or the analog stick, you have a lot more control of Polar if you hold forward and kind of just like arc your angles on the control stick. So you're like doing like slight diagonals. Uh, it gives you a lot more precision in the movement, which is really needed for how wide you have to make a lot of these turns. Now, coming up is the alternate timeline level, two bears repeating, uh, it's building bridges. I'm gonna try and go for a small optimization, um, just once, because it's literally uh, make or break the run. Because if I fail, I have to go all the way back to the beginning of the level, which is around, I'd say around a minute and a half. So, hope I'll get it. Yeah, it, it involves the, the box dupe that Merc has mentioned in the last level, and we'll touch more on it when we get to it. I'm so sorry for spoiling. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> keep, I just, just spoiled the it. box dupe, you spoiled Cortex, like, man. Lesson learned. Don't talk to Merc, guys, if you don't want things spoiled. I can't spoiled. believe Cortex was in this game. <laughs> it actually is a game where Cortex is not in it. Yeah, Entrance. Entrance, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Thanks, so I did that <laughs> checkpoint. We're not gonna need it. And entrance at the next DSA. I did do it at a previous DSA. I, um, summer 20, I believe. Or 21. Was it uh, any percent? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and now we're back to. Uh, Bears repeating, basically, like the end of the level. Oh, how I miss yeah. This. yeah, there, there. He, got, he got the dupe. So if you break those crates and then very quickly uh, enter the bonus before the TNTs explode, the, they count for the main level and for the bonus. But if Cookie dies in this bonus, he loses the dupe. And because he skipped the checkpoint, that is a level reset. I'm gonna break this box just to, just for safety, and if I do end up breaking all the boxes, uh, just to show what happens at the end of the level. Yeah. Conveniently, in this game, unlike in the original trilogy, if you go over the crate count, it still gives you the gem. Did um, you do two boxes? Yeah, he, he did yeah. do two, oh, so yeah. like, optimally, you would skip that reinforced crate because it takes time to break it with a body slam. Yeah. But if he misses a crate here, or if he, uh, you know, if for some reason like one of the loops didn't work, then uh, he's not out of luck. Yeah, so he will be one over now because he's currently only skipped to the Yeah, so points. at the end he should have 229 out of 228. Yeah. Uh, this formation is a lot less annoying than Bear's repeating pre-patch because there's very few, if any, 2x2 crates. Um, otherwise, it's like exactly the same as Bear's repeating, so this is probably a good spot for some donations. I'd love to. We've had a five dollar donation come in from Taro Nuke Nine, who says, "Let's go, Cookie. Will we get double punch bot skip, or will we feel the wrath of Cortex?" We have had a five dollar donation come in from Stuart Zero 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 Zero, who says, "Yo, Cookie, thing ha." That's what I get for trying, right? <laughs> D-pad man. <laughs> 
And no, Stuart. One more $5 donation from the Green Machine who just reminds us why we're here. They say, I lost my father to dementia in 2013 and now my mum and aunt are in the mid to late stages of it. My dad got me into gaming. My younger brother is going to graduate from college with a degree in video game design this May and hopes to work for Riot Games. And I hope we can find a cure for this disease too. Everyone here agrees with you, the Green Machine. Thank you so much for your donation. And back to you guys in the run. Uh, quick shout outs to Stuart, who is the world record holder for the original Crash 2 100%. It's actually one of the, the greatest to play that game. An overall great guy. Yeah. So for some reason, those missiles only have a hitbox when they land, so I can just go through them. So there, if you notice, when I spin the punch bot, it went under Cortex. Uh, which I'll explain a little bit further once we get to the third phase, and hopefully that will happen again. With this, you can just stand in the middle to avoid those. Okay, right, I only. So now we're gonna do a death abuse, and because the the punch bot went under Cortex, the game kind of registered, but also didn't register. So this is the. Uh, punch bot dupe that I did on the first phase. The this punch bot, okay. I was gonna say this punch bot that I just spinned can come out in the exact same area where this one is, and in that scenario, it's a lot. Uh, it can ex. I can't English today. Oh, oh. Thankfully. Even with the, the extra death, the punch boss still shows up, so... There we go. These skips have changed so much since I, like, messed around with them. Yeah, this is one where, like, as, as I was on my way to taking my break from this game... Uh, I wonder... <laughs> Uh, like, this is one that was, like, being theory-crafted, and then, like, now it's, like, an active part of the run, which is so cool. Um, but yeah, no, that skips the entire fourth phase of that fight, which is very long. Um, also, if you die, it takes even longer for some reason. Hey, one thing I didn't touch is that you can't spin that enemy once fourth phase starts, because, uh, Cortex's health is not visible, and if you spin him when his health is not visible, you will soft lock. The level. A little hidden box there. I'm trying to like mention it when I see them and like uh, when I remember to mention them. But there are some uh, hidden boxes here and there that would that would a casual would probably not be able. There, there were two like really high up there. And yeah. That's those are two of the more unfair ones in the game. So this level is actually where we're gonna have the very first instance of Triple Mask. Cause we, I don't think we have seen it. Yeah, no, this, is the first, this is the first level where it's used. Triple Mask in Crash 4, unlike uh, a lot of other Crash games, is not actually too useful because uh, it doesn't have an animation, so it just, you just immediately go into it. But uh, it doesn't really give you any advantages uh, while a lot of damage abuse does give you an advantage. Yeah. So they are used a lot for damage abuses and not much for the invincibility that it gives. There are also very few levels that have more than two mass crates, and because you can't carry them between levels, it just doesn't come up a lot. And it it opens you up to be a, a lot more, like a lot less conservative with your oh oh. <laughs> well, well, we'll see it later. <laughs> um, but yeah, you get, it opens up t like. Ability to be a lot more conserv or a lot less conservative with like mask usage because you know in older crash games like so, like I could damage these here but then I would lose time in you know the next like three levels or something. Um, There's an interesting one where the time crates kind of gradually get uh, like sh longer the longer you in you get like so much shorter and somewhere longer which you can see here. Yeah. Like the first one have a very tight timer so they're all like ending around the same time which yeah. I thought was an interesting concept when I first saw it. Unfortunately, because of that death and the bonus, we don't have the triple for this section. Oh. So 
So you see how much Triple Mask would have saved. Because there's also a lot of body slam boxes that the Triple Mask would have just naturally broken. Again, another world that looks extremely cool. Yeah, this is the entire this is the Eggy Plus dimension, which is it's just like a you know dinosaurs and stuff. It's definitely really awesome. Egg. 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 <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna use this to tell a little story of the egg. <laughs> it's the fact that uh, here at ESA there is a breakfast included in your hotel stay, and uh, Cookie has a thing where he likes to. Uh, Eat a whole plate of bread and then go back and eat a whole plate of eggs. It's not a whole plate. <laughs> ah. Don't paint me wrong. I've seen it. It's a whole plate. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the ta I was at the table across. Uh, I'll just I'll just pretend I saw a whole plate. This is definitely a whole plate. <laughs> so uh, now his I mean, Alapo took a picture of it. So <laughs> yeah, now his name is just Egg. <laughs> we ha we have egg. photo evidence. So this is the first instance of Cortex. Uh, Story-wise, the reason you're playing is Cortex. Um, after you beat Cortex in the, the previous boss fight, he gets sad because he lost again. He's like, is this all there is forever? And then Entropy reveals that he was going to stab Cortex in the back. So uh, Entropy is in this whole, like, I'm going to become a god and establish new world order. And Cortex is like, okay, we have a common enemy. Let's team up. Uh, so now Cortex is helping Crash and Coco. I love this box. Yeah, that box is uh <laughs> So funny funny thing, they they did apply a lot of patches to the the ninth gen versions of this game, so PS5, Xbox, Series X, and Switch. And one of the things they fixed is that box, because for some reason you have to like you saw a cookie like shoot the like the enemy into a platform like five times uh, and still had trouble with it. They fixed that on PS5, but they didn't fix it on PC. Um, probably because PC was ported by a different development team. Yeah, because if you just shoot it twice, which is enough to kind of jellify the enemies, you will not have enough fights to reach that box. Yeah. Th there's a lot of patches like that that just didn't apply to the PC version, and it's like a mixed bag because some things that were like nice quality of life don't exist. Mm. But also, there's a lot of skips in any percent that they tried to patch out and found workarounds for them, but they're generally like a lot more annoying to deal with. Uh, so, like the next gen version of this game for any percent is like a bit more on the inconvenient side. Um, but everything in PC is intact; nothing's been patched out, and that's like along with accessibility. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why PC is so popular. This end part is a little bit tight on Wumpa, but there is a a Wumpa counter that, that I can be certain that I have all of them, or at least enough. Keep in mind this is something Cookie has to uh, kind of keep track of throughout the entirety of the run. It's like the Wumpa count to make sure that he has enough Wumpa fruit to get the gems, uh, which adds another like level of stress. to. Uh, there, most of the levels, you don't really need to think about it too much. Uh, but there are quite a few where uh, a little mistake can cost you. Funny yeah. enough, on that level, only on PC, the the 80% Wumpa Gem counter or the Wumpa Gem actually unlocks at like 78%. The Bandicoots are on That's route. interesting. And this was uh, another spot. level that was uh, <laughs> that was in the demo. Yeah, this is the. Uh, Cortex's secret spot level. So sorry, I even ruined the spot. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, my, my split name for this level is uh, Raymundo's secret spot for anybody who's old enough to remember rocket power. That's a cool little thing you did with the uh, uh, bouncing into the wall there. I've never seen that. Yeah. Instead of just bouncing on the spots, I can bounce into the wall to kind of cut a little bit of height from the bounce. Yeah, very can bounce faster. small optimization. But an optimization compromise. There's a really neat one up here that I've start seen Cookie do that right there, jumping off the checkpoint to skip going around the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, this is the alternate timeline version of Snow Way Out. Uh, so we got to see this level again. And um, 
like most other timeline levels, there is not too much different here. Just like pay attention and try to see if you can see anything that's changed. There's going to be like a little, um, a little different. But other than that, we can uh, probably fit in some donations here. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got a little puzzle for you on this one. We got a five dollar donation from We Love Cookie, who says, "Hey Cookie, just wanted to tell you that we love you and we're enjoying the amazing commentary from the boys. I hope to use this run for learning purposes." And any idea who this actually is behind the donation? Would you like to make Ooh. a guess? Learning. I would say Hammerhead Labs. Oh, it's RKG Game again. Ah. <laughs> RKG Game, thank you again. We've had a $6.69 donation from Cassie Cow, who says, nice, got to go fast. Hashtag Shoki. And a $5 donation from Sutibu, who says, amazing work, Cookie. Love your runs. Really appreciate every donation. We are inching ever closer to $50,000. We are just $835 away. Can we make it before the end of this run? I think we can. I was just I about to say that that would be amazing if we could. Thank you so much to everyone donating and the community members and the people we know. Um, shout out to Cassie Cow, another uh, fellow Norwegian uh, and a good friend. You can probably fit in one or two more. Well, I'll try and remind... Uh, I can't even speak now. I'll try and remind people what we're actually here for. So just a reminder that Alzheimer Fonden is the national Swedish fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. Alzheimer's has no current cure, but treatments for symptoms are available and research continues. As we speak, hopeful antibody treatments, vaccines, and molecules are underway. To help scientists compete, a complete the quest for a cure, they need more funds, and every dollar that is donated to ESA goes directly to Alzheimer Fonden. So this level is actually uh, the third level that was in the demo, uh, Dino Dash. You basically just done a demo run. Yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't realize until this moment that, yeah, two of the demo levels are right next to each other in the run. Yeah, why do you do it like this? Oh, oh. oh. So, that, yeah. that is very common. <laughs> I yeah, remember that yeah. happening back then, too. Yeah, so, so Cookie did a quick level reset there. Uh, we timed this game loadless because the loads are not consistent on any platform, except for, like, maybe PS5. But um, it, it if he died, he would have gone back to the beginning of the level anyway, but his death count would have gone up to one, and that just doesn't give him as much of a room to work with for the three death gem uh so re just resetting the level on an early death is just generally a lot safer and not much slower if slower at all than uh just dying actually in that case it was probably faster because he would have had to sit to the death animation yeah, it's also to just uh get rid of the death cycles because crash games are notorious for having just extremely terrible death cycles Mo modern ones at least very much are uh, th this is also, for one, this is a chase level with a dinosaur. And uh, this is also a place where you can really see how powerful the slide spin can be. This is a little callback to uh, the levels you saw Rico do yesterday, like uh, uh, Dynamite and Boneyard. Uh, you get chased by a dinosaur. It's really as simple as that. Maybe a little walk around or jump around to get into the box. Really easy to break that box of accident. If you do break it, there is a very easy backup where you just do a double jump into a body slam and it'll hit that top crate. Oh, but, I didn't even know that. Yeah, but the uh, you know bouncing around is a little faster because body slamming in this game actually slows down your falling momentum, which is uh, very interesting. And he, this bonus cookie is, again, doing some little minor optimizations to minimize the amount of backtracking he has to do. Also, the, the, the baby dinosaurs in the background of this uh, level are very adorable. They also laugh at you if you die. We, we, nice. might, we might have seen there if that Nitro Bounce got uh, messed up, but they, they are not laughing this time. little interesting tidbit with this rail section. Uh, oh, God, I'm inside the rail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not what I was talking about, but that was pretty cool, too. Uh, 
just quick note on that. Uh, because I'm inside the rail, uh, Coco's slightly lower to where she would have been, uh, which may actually makes jumping for the boxes that I get on that rail section harder. Or in some cases, impossible. So th this is a session that really tests your knowledge of like the coyote timing. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying with that rail section, the T-Rex uh, does break any crate you leave behind, which is why you see Cookie leaving many of them. Uh, but the like little small Triceratops that chase you on the rail actually do not, so Cookie had to actually break every crate on the rail. Does the dinosaur uh, break all the boxes without no, like without any jank? Like the, it's yeah. always consistent. It, it oh, okay, should yeah. be always. Yeah. Should. 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 Uh, I've had a, a 106 run. Uh, not die, but it'll lose a lot of time to the dino just not breaking one of the boxes. Yeah, I love chase level jank. It's an epic so great. crash game. Yeah. <laughs> May I assist? Cra crash 3 OG, which the, the run I did yesterday, there's not too much, but you do get situations like, you know, accidental body slam and the dinosaur rubber bands into murder. Uh, but yeah, so that unlocked uh, the final quantum mass, where we have a, one more timeline level in this hub before we continue. Uh, this is one of the longer levels in the run. This is rock blocked. Uh, it's alternate timeline of the level we just did, Dino Dash. But this Dingo Dial section is really long, and then when you finish it, it spits you out into the beginning of Dino Dash. So this is like, like how long? Is it, like five minute level or? Uh... Just a bit under five minutes. Yeah. It, but it is the third longest level in the game. Beaten by what? Rush Hour and Toxic Tunnels. Toxic Tunnels. Toxic Tunnels, of course, yeah. Yeah, Rush Hour is the longest in any percent, but Toxic Tunnels is the yeah, longest yeah, yeah, in ACP, yeah. I believe. I was thinking one of the Entropy space levels, but they're not that long. Nah, yeah, like Crash Land is on the longer side, but it's yeah, not yeah, as long yeah. as any of these. Oh wait, I actually forgot the crash landed still oh, also it, beats Rockwalk. Is it okay? okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, Rockwalk is fourth. Oh uh, yeah, so you, you, uh, Cookie's gonna use Dingo's hitbox there to break all four of those crates and then just hover around this wall. Unlike uh, Home Cooking, Dingo cannot use his spin to break these walls, so you do have to use the TNT. So hovering around it just saves the time of picking up another TNT. I did not know you could just walk over that. I didn't either. <laughs> You would think that you could go for like a corner cut here, but if you do, the camera doesn't follow you, so. Cookie's just teaching us live. Yeah. That's what he's doing. That's, what, that's one of the reasons I was excited to do this, aside from you know, just loving this game, is that it has been quite a long time since I grinded it, like, again, like over a year. So there's so many things that, like, you know, like Cookie is just expanded on the foundations that like early runners like myself and like ENSG Master and Potty set. Um, and like it, th this category has evolved so much for like this game's only like a little over two years old. That's yeah, a little over two years. Came out Octo October 2nd, 2021, I believe. 2020, but yes. 2020. But yeah, so... Uh, 2023, I'm... <laughs> it all blurs together. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there you saw more of Cookie jumping on a crate that had... Or a stack that had TNT at the bottom and spinning, and it blows up the TNT without him getting hit. Uh, but yeah, so like, it takes you back to this part of Dino Dash, which is after the first chase, so there, there is quite a lot more to do. You could probably fit in a couple of donations there. I said it's a level we've seen before. Absolutely. We are now at $49,200 as the donations keep coming in. We've had a $10 donation coming in from someone you may have mentioned before, Hammerhead Labs, who says, Cookie, glad to see you showing off your amazing skill at Crash. Also, the other dono wasn't me. Lol. <laughs> and a $25 donation coming in from Evanesia, who simply says, heart. Thank you, everybody, for your donations. We are just eight hundred dollars away from fifty thousand dollars raised for Alzheimer Fondant. Keep them coming. We can do this. I want to point out that out of bounds that Cookie did in the bonus because that that is new to me. That is so cool because that that bonus 
used to be like very slow and frustrating. And like the last stack with like all the TNTs, if you die there, you got to do it all again. So seeing that optimization is really awesome. I was gonna mention that too. I yeah. was like, really impressed by that. I'm, I'm sure like, like on, on the camera, <laughs> like you did that, and, like my like my eyes just like opened up. I was like, I did not know you do that. And also at the end of the level, to avoid having to body slam uh, the boxes, you can just stand under them. Yeah. Also, quick shout outs to our friends in the back donating as well. Um, ESA has been a great time so far. Yeah, I've been loving it. It would be even greater if we could reach 20,000 during this run. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I, no, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say that it's really easy to like body slam while you do the spins over uh, here. Yeah. You, like, you're very used to like buffer spins and uh, body slamming. Uh, is you can do that at any point while you're in the air in this game. Yeah. So it's yeah. really easy to do it by mistake. But most of the movement is buffering, like Merka says. So you're just very rapidly doing slide spin, slide spin, slide spin. But when you're going for these whole skips, you want to extend the slide as much as you can. So it is requires some mix up on the timing. I was so sorry, Kuri. I just poked you <laughs> like in the middle <laughs> of that. <laughs> Did not mean to. Here I'm gonna try to go for a tight flame crate cycle at the very beginning. It's also a little bit hard because there's a TNT on top and I don't want to spin that. There we go. Yeah, so this is the start of the Bermugula's Orbit Hub, which is a pretty well-liked one. Like among well, runners and uh, like casual players, I feel. This is really well-liked for casual. Yeah, no, I see a lot of people like lo at least this level. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is out for launch. Uh, quick shout outs. This yep, but the evil twins are on the right side on that screen from Twin Sanity. Had to, had to point that out. Uh, but yeah, this is. I, I don't know if it's the tightest anymore, but this is like the, one of the tightest levels in terms of fruit count. You have to be very, very particular about it. It is, at least in the run, this and Booty Calls are the only two levels where we get the exact same amount at the end. Yeah, I remember you posting the exact amount of Wumpa you got in this level, and I was just like, dude, yeah, just like round it out, like, e like to the point. <laughs> like even when I like, when when I was running this category, like this is one of the levels that I very meticulously routed fruit, and like I, I broke very specific crates, and even then I only had like a ballpark of like what. I, ooh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I only had like a ballpark of what I was trying to go for. Like, I'd get to this section and be like, okay, I had like 215. That's like good enough. And Cookie just took that further and it's just like, I'm gonna get the exact same thing every time. It's gonna be just barely enough. Because I died there, I will have to check my Wumpa counter before the bonus, because there is some jank that can happen. That whenever you break a box, so you see these Wumpas fly towards me, uh, and if you break, like normal box and then you break a checkpoint what's gonna happen is if you die um, the wumpas will not count because they you broke the checkpoint first before they flew into you we also like didn't even touch on uh, the quantum mask in this level Ika Ika uh, his ability is uh, anti-gravity so you'll see like when Cookie hits the mask power Coco just flips upside down and starts going up um, and you can you can do that twice before landing, so like you can flip to anti grab and then flip back to normal grab. That is a very important golden wampa that I just missed, but there is a backup, although rather slow. That's just bouncing on all of these boxes. And here is doing uh, very quick anti grabs to get these bounces very quickly. Now we should be fine. Do you know what your count usually is here? Not after the bonus, but I lost 28, and at the end I got 30. So we should be fine. I also want to point out that after the bonus, uh, there, there, there's no checkpoint from the side scrolling session to the end of this level. Uh, that's going to be very relevant the next level. 
Alright, we're good. Nice. But yeah, I lost 28 before the bonus and I got 30 and then and then at the end I got uh 2x or which the exact amount is 558. Yep. So uh this is shipping error. It's the alternate version of out for launch. Um I don't know about you guys, but uh, I I do not have fond opinions of this level. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> Rico, I think you know exactly my sense on this level from that incident. Are you talking about the clip? The, the, ship, the... the shipping error incident of 2022. So there's been a lot of shipping error incidents of 2022. Is it uh, five, four times? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll touch more about it when we get closer when it happens four yeah. times in a row when it happens <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <it> ha yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah i don't know what to say without touching on the thing we're gonna talk about at the end but i i have very unkind feelings towards this level you talk about how much we love cortex yeah like i like cortex as a character but this level is it ain't it, Chief. There's a bit of a puzzle section here, I guess, uh, where you have to like figure out how to get up. Yeah, I, I want to point this out because I actually, I think I'm the one who found this, but uh, Cookie did like a head bash into the wall and it actually hit the exclamation crate on the other side. So Cookie didn't have to go under the uh, arrow crate. I remember because I kept telling people to do that and they wouldn't. And I don't know if he mentioned like Cortex is faster. Did we do that? We, like, we touched on it a little bit in Fossil Field. Yeah, okay. So shooting it once uh, turns it into uh, stone? Yeah, stone platform. And uh, shooting it twice does uh, either one of two things depending on the on which like dimension you're in, right? Yeah, so in uh, pretty much the position of the the enemy. Yeah. yeah. In, in every other dimension, it turns them into a like a blob that you can bounce off of. In this dimension, it turns them into just like antimatter or something that they just become uh, intangible. Basically, the uh, Ika Ika version, right? Ika Ika? Uh, no, it's like Lonnie. Lonnie Lonely. Lonely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The names, uh, the names mix up for me. Yeah. Ika Ika is the gravity, right? No. Yes. yes the yes. gravity. Yeah. 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 Not up to date on your crash lore, dude. There, <laughs> there is a test at the end of the marathon. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit tight, so I'm gonna grab one of these. Yeah, the fruit here, it's it's not nearly as tight as out for launch, but it can mess you up if you're not like being mindful of it. Yeah, I've never really played this game for lore, sadly. Um, I don't think I'm the only one. But uh, I'm I'm so sorry. It's so I mean, uh, I mean, obvious. <laughs> story is like secondary to the gameplay in the Crash series as a whole. They did put more effort into this than like many older Crash games. But again, the gameplay is a selling point. Oh yeah. So uh, there was a thing that used like that's distinct about Out for Launch and this level in terms of these ni these nitros coming up. Uh, in Out for Launch, they're stationary. Uh, in this level, they're not. Yep, there, there it is. <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't even the game. That was just me. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll blame the game. <laughs> well, more reason to blame shipping error. Yeah. So uh, if those nitros bounce at the wrong time, you die. And uh, there's no mask in this level. And the last checkpoint is again right at the start of this uh, side scrolling section. So it, it's really bad time loss, and sometimes it's just beyond your control. I just want to say, did you guys just clap for him messing up? That's messed up. <laughs> it's called encouragement. <laughs> they're yeah, they're oh. going for it. <laughs> You're scaring me with these. You're like, <laughs> oh, like touching it. <laughs> I, I will clap for the end of shipping error. Nitros, sure. nitros like that on rail sections were purposefully made to not bounce, but I guess the developers just forgot about that one. I think early on, Out for Launch was also like that, but then yes. in the early patch, they 
fixed it, but they didn't fix shipping error. And even on like like next gen where they fixed so many other things, they still didn't fix shipping error. What you said there is correct. I remember uh, I remember that being an issue in both versions. Yeah. And touching on what Merkez was selling, or that everyone touched, uh, I was once during, doing a 106 speedrun, which you can't die because uh, you, you have to get the perfect relic. Um, and I got the Nitro Bounce at the end of Shipping Error five times in a row. He was basically screaming so loud that, uh, yeah, I mean, I think yeah, <laughs> everyone in Portugal could hear it. Doesn't even matter that he's on an island. It was like every time just screaming. It was, uh, it's a hilariously funny uh, video. I think it's on your Twitch. It is, it is. Uh, it's like a four minutes long of him just dying to that Nitro and it's absolutely pure content. Yeah. Uh... So if you want to see how bad it can go there when it's not your fault, that is a good video to watch. Yeah, uh, ship, like I love most of the levels in this game. Uh, but Shipping Error is probably in my bottom three levels in this series for many reasons, that being one of them. Yeah, so Cookie did a damage abuse here to just, uh, minimizes the amount he has to go in before the backtracking. Like, you, you're supposed to go all the way to the end, but with the damage abuse, he's able to just, like, go halfway through and then just hit this detonator and then it's all clear. A little, I guess it's supposed to be a puzzle, but it really is not. You have to you have to move out of the way for like yeah. a lot of these because you you can get crushed and that's an auto kill. Oh, oh that's the, the the swag cycle. That does save time, but it's uh, if you mess it up, you have to do the whole part the whole section again. Yes. <laughs> yes. This elevator is very slow, and like that didn't lose any time. Uh, but you have more freedom on that elevator than you do like most other ones for some reason. And yeah, because usually once you activate a TNT or a TNT, an, an elevator, it will usually put invis walls around you or force you into the corner, the corner, the center of the elevator. But that one doesn't. Crash land. So this is like aesthetically one of like the most unique and like beautiful levels. I think also shout out to Snowgo Crash Two. Also probably one of the ones that people struggle the most with in the beginning uh, oh, for sure. of the game's lifespan in terms of like getting the perfect and getting all boxes because this was an extremely hard and frustrating level to get all boxes in without dying. Yes, uh, which. Uh, is one of the requirements for like max completion. It's to uh, get all boxes and not die, which uh, nets you the insanely perfect one. Yeah. And here we got uh, Tim the Cat. Our favorite. Merkaz, I'm proud that you've come around to calling him Tim. <laughs> yeah, but only because it's the cat. Yeah. It, it, I used to uh, really hate that he was called Tim because it it was like a community meme. And then I think during the during the GDQ run, yeah, which I also commentated back in. Uh, it was 2021. I remember I was watching it. Yeah, and uh, uh, someone else on the on the couch. I don't know. Abdul. If it, was, it was Abdul. Yeah, yeah, he said this is Tim, and you're like, oh my god, no, it's not Tim. Uh, only Rico calls him that, and then yeah. like <laughs> everybody in chat just started calling him Tim. All right, so this is like this is supposed to be the second triple mask, but this is the first one because of what happened in uh, uh, Blast of the Past. Uh, but it just lets you just fly through this section that just has so many hazards. Um, also, Crash Land has killed so many runs that I killed Tim. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> Tim, no. How did oh, you oh, you went oh. really fast. So that, I've never had that happen. That was supposed to be a second mass. This level is loaded with mass crates. Like, there was one at the beginning that Cookie just burned on, like, a TNT crate because it, you just get so many of them that it doesn't matter. There was, like, I think two in the uh, the Tim section. I think there's upwards of, like, eight masks in this level. 
Also, those are uh, Mama Tim's. Does anyone remember how the the cat part? I don't know. Came I wasn't there for that lore. I think it was just Abdul thinking he was a cat. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Abdul. <laughs> The Tim part, I don't really remember. Tim was like early on, uh, like we didn't, we, so the, the name of the species is Snurgle, but they didn't tell us that until like a few weeks after the game came out. Um, so we didn't know what to call it. And so like some early runner was just like, oh, he's he's Tim. And I, I rolled with it and it just kind of became a community thing. So now it's uh, Tim the Cat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did feel like it was like an Abdul thing. Yeah, that sounds like an Abdul. <laughs> we love you, Abdul. It's so easy to like mess up how you use the gravity mask. Like, forget yeah. like which direction you are, and you can only switch twice. Yeah, you can only switch like to the opposite of what you normally are, and then back once. You cannot switch. Uh, all the time. Yeah, the, it, the reason for that is that every time you do, it gives you a bit of like a momentum halt. So if you could switch indefinitely, you would just never fall. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, the so the third bongo in the level, the third triple mask. Um, yeah, so that that hidden gem, that one's a bit weirdly hinted. Like the hint is that like there's like a nitro floating behind you in the anti grab, but not one of the better hinted ones. I feel. One of the ones uh, where I went, how are you supposed to find that when yeah. I first uh, did it? Mo most of the hidden gems in the normal levels, I think, are pretty barely hidden. Um, th there's a couple outliers like that one. I think the one in, like, Out for Launch and No Dillo Delling are a bit, like, off kilter. But then you get to the inverted levels, and the hidden gems have two philosophies. Either they're the easiest thing on the planet, or they're something you would never figure out on your own. With almost no in-between. Yeah, pretty much in inverted mode, it's just the how would I find that without a guide, or that that's not even hidden. Yeah. Yeah. Th there's, I, I think inverted is no way out. It's literally just in the middle of the level. <laughs> While uh, inverted, um, what's the first thing on that? No deal, darling? Uh, home cooking, I think. Home cooking. It, I, I've heard of an, an anecdote that, like, because that one's, like, hidden in the background in, like, something that's supposed to be scenery. And I think it, someone told me it was, uh, I think Buchu was playing it, and someone oh, was yeah. like, okay, so you know the background? He's a say no more. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I was in that, uh, I was in that voice call, and I remember Buchu is a fellow runner and a good friend of ours, and uh, he was uh, at wit's end uh, trying to complete this game. It was uh, quite traumatizing for him, I think. So uh, at the end of it, uh, our friend Brody said, Buchu, so you know that, and that's the yeah. story. And uh, just yeah. no, immediately <laughs> at that, like that far in, you just understand, like the like the design philosophy of hiding this stuff. So you just give them one hint, and it just clicks immediately. Oh yeah, that was crash landed. A uh, little Easter egg. The the name of this level is a reference to a canceled crash game from the early 2010s that was supposed to be like a full reboot of the series called Crash Landed. So a neat little reference. Oh, oh, that is. That's uh, Cookie actually he switched to Crash there because uh, he, there there is a uh, a little Easter egg here that makes more sense when you play Crash. So for for the sake, even though Coco won the donation, I it's very fair to just use Crash here. The Coco one really doesn't make sense. I I didn't understand it until uh, like we'll, we'll talk about it more after it. Yeah. But yeah. This is a like one minute uh, rail that can't fail, but it does have some cool dialogue that just constantly repeats. So this is a perfect time to read any donations if we got any. This is a very long rail section. I'd love to. And I just want to call out as well that Cookie's been going for two hours at what an awesome pace and still going as well. So this is just awesome. Thank you for this run so far. We have had a $5 donation come in from KP245, who says, Dingo360 hype. <laughs> we have had a $5 donation come in from, guess who? RKG Game. He says, hey guys, RKG Game here. Good luck on the rest of the run. And I know we can get to $50,000. Good night and have fun. And a $7 donation has come in from Gaffy Taffy, who says, Hashtag Shoki. Cookie taught me how to be the second best ACG runner. I love this guy. He should definitely press A8. Keep the donations coming in in case you need more incentive <laughs> I, to I, donate. 
No, cut in. Cut in if you need to. Uh, that was the Easter egg. If you get every Boompa Berry in that rail section, it plays the Woe meme that became really popular in, like, what, 2019? Uh, the, the reason uh, we didn't want to do this with Coco, and I have personal experience with this because on my first playthrough, I played as Coco. When you do that with her, uh, it's also like super distorted, but it says, yeah. And I was very confused, and someone had to explain to me in chat, if you do it with Crash, it's the wool meme. So that's why we switched to Crash for this. Uh, but yeah, this is the fourth boss fight against the Entropies, because Entropy has teamed up with an alternate universe version of himself. But here you just gotta use a gravity mask to break these uh, generators and then go to the left side and then go to the right side. Yeah, this is just a combination of using every quantum mask that we got, even though we only used Lonnie Loli for the rail section. I want to touch a slight bit on those things. First of all, Gaffy, it's uh, B9, not A8. And uh, second of all, I did not tell him. I promise, it was not me. <laughs> I'm so lost, by the way. Yeah, it, 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 I'll, I'll tell you later. Okay. It, 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 oh, well, I can I can tell him now. If Ooh. oh oh, oh yeah, it, that, that's the end of the fight, by the way. A good thing with EK is that if you accidentally body slam like that, you can just switch gravity, and the body slam animation will just end. Yeah, so that that fight is played up as like the the climax of the game, like the the ultimate showdown, and it's uh it's generally considered to be pretty anticlimactic. Um, it you you can tell that there's so much more they wanted to do, and probably had to cut because of time constraints. Uh, but yeah, this level is awesome. Oh. Food run. There are a little futuristic theme going on. Um, I just want to be as happy as that ice cream cone. But yeah, I guess I'll tell quickly. Me, Cookie, and uh, some other friends did an escape room earlier, and there was one where we had to do like press in a code, and uh, if you pressed it three times, then it got locked for five minutes. So Cookie uh, pressing B8 <laughs> once, uh, and we told him, no, that's not the code, and you he continues to press it twice <laughs> more, and locking the safe for five minutes, causing us to go over the timer. So uh, he's both called Egg and B8 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can use the uh, the momentum you get with anti grab to just like either extend your jump so you don't have to wait as long for these ropes, or just skip the ropes entirely. Oh, eight B, sorry, not B8. <laughs> but yeah, these levels are. Uh, this level is probably one of my favorites in yeah, Crash 4. It's definitely. really great. And hopefully the elevator that I just used will be the last instance of uh, using those long elevators, because we can just skip the last three in this level. Yeah, this one coming up here, you can use uh, an Akano jump. That. Oh, I have not seen it. Yeah, it's used in uh, any percent of the ball. This next one was used in a very old version of the any percent route. Um, oh. Not that part. <laughs> I had to go a little bit further because the death plane is still active once you're down there. Wait, what do you mean that part wasn't a part of it? That's how it always looks for me. Uh, what, the, the death? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's what happens when I do it. Um, actually, like I used to think that didn't save any time in. Uh, ACG, even though it looks like it does, I guess it, it, it does, does save a little bit if you're fast with it. Yeah. Here, here's Cookie doing a little bit of the time warp, even at like 120, where it's only putting him a little bit forward. Uh, it, it also lets you very cleanly destroy these nitros. Um, but like in 30 FPS, he'd be going like a full like three feet in front of him. <laughs> this bonus like acts very oddly at 30 FPS, though. Sometimes things just blow up for no reason. Though it's not reliable. That was the time warp. One of the only things that in this game uh, that I named. It's so, a good name. Uh, so I'll take uh, I'll take your pride in that. I mean, <laughs> the other name people were calling it was the Kapuna Watek, which I it, <laughs> is, it it is, but like time warp sounds cool. You have to give the tech cool names. Like in uh, in the Insane trilogy, I named the Mock Tornado. I named it after the the brawl Mennonite mock tornado. <laughs>
I'm gonna be honest. I just ripped it off another game. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I ripped mine off of another game. So <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not creative creative enough to come up with something. So uh, we just steal. The uh, this, this level uh, is rush hour. <laughs> it's really uh, adrenaline rush, if you ask me. We'll, we'll, I, I'm, get to, I'm, we'll get to see if these small poppies uh -oh. get to smoke a steak. Oh. Yeah, so now this is. Uh, so the previous level introduced these uh, robots that carry TNTs. Uh, this level takes it further and introduces robots that carry nitrodes, which we'll see in a moment. And with that, what just happened is sometimes Dingo's vacuum just doesn't work. So you'll see the TNT even wiggled a bit, but it just didn't even vacuum. Yeah. So th there's the first TNT carrying Nitro. A uh, bit of an anecdote, because this is a very long level that does not have terribly too much going on. Um, when the game first came out, I was doing my first playthrough, and in the in food run... Oh, you got the snipe. Nice. Uh, <laughs> in in the food run, I saw that the the, the, the robots carrying TNTs, and I was like, yo, that's a little wild. And one of my mods, uh, who's a fellow like Crash speedrunner, Atomical Sloths, uh, responded with, uh, imagine if the next level has robots carrying nitros, and then Rush Hour had robots carrying nitros, and he said, oh, the devs really are as evil as I am. <laughs> Dingo's, uh, voice lines here are actually pretty great. Yeah, he, he's, so this is like an alternate future, and he's seeing his franchise as super successful, so he's wondering if he can do that. I'm so sorry for my wordplay and puns. It's getting a bit too late. <laughs> Normal time for me. Um, yeah, for me too. I'm just oh, uh, yeah. just not getting too much uh, yeah. sleep at ESA. It's too fun here. Yeah, very. As you can see, this 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 level has been very long so far, and there's still quite a bit more of Dingo Dial to do, but uh, it it, it doesn't stop there. Uh, th this side-scrolling bus section is actually really difficult. Like if the cycles just don't line up, sometimes you just have to take a damage off of these nitros, and then like trying to like not get hit by these four nitro bots is very brutal. A little uh, side note, Rico mentioned like inverted earlier um, and how they like get filters that kind of change the gameplay a little bit. It either like it can speed them up or slow it down and uh, as thankful as we are, uh, this level becomes so much better with inverted. Right guys? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I even start? <laughs> okay, Sense here I'm sarcasm. purposefully gonna wait a little bit just because it is super easy to die. Uh, before the first checkpoint in the Tana section. And if you die before the first checkpoint, there is a chance that those two boxes will despawn. I I've had them despawn, but then still count for the crate counter, but also there there are instances where they despawn and don't. It is uh, very... I think it's like 50-50 that it had it happen to me, where it still counts, but I just don't want to take the risk. Absolutely not, because like, you saw how long that Dingo Dial section was, and this Tana section is not short either. Um, like, casually, this is by far the longest level in the game, and it's the longest level in any percent. That box deload happens with every level uh, that has two characters, and it happens in the switch to the second character. If you break a box as or super early after you switch to the second character, if you die before the first checkpoint, there is a chance that the box will just not appear. Yeah. There's some boxes here you gotta look out for at on the side because uh, they are not always that easy to see. And then you're supposed to jump from the wall there and up to the rail, but uh, Cookie just decides to skip it like a chad. Yeah. Um, otherwise, like this level is the Tana section in particular is a lot of rails, so it's a lot of auto scroller. So could fit some donations here. Thank you very much. We've got a five dollar donation coming from Tears, who says. Triple Mask Nitro Processing. Also, Rico, please come back to ACG. I might after I'm 
do some more any percent. We've had another five dollar donation coming from Jonas sixty seven sixty seven, who says, "Can we see Coco in her most cozy unicorn onesie for the rest of the game?" Big oh, horn energy. <laughs> Big horn energy. I, that's actually like one of my favorite skins. It's a, it's a really cool one. Couch, do you want to see Big horn energy? No. No. <laughs> the was couch that, has was spoken. That a lot of <laughs> I just don't want to see Coco, to be honest. Listen here, you. <laughs> the donations spoke for themselves. Yeah, I have, uh, to, I have to stand up for the donations. I think we I think we have to support that and uh, do the big horn energy, even if it's against my will. I'm I'm a man of the people. Don't you just love the idea of doing the last part of the the, the next level in a unicorn onesie? Like, <laughs> I'm sensing not. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting that vibe, you know. It's definitely the the comfiest part of the of the category. Then you got a very like infamous like there's a gauntlet of vehicles that like you got a what's it called? Oh, 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 dude! Oh, get me out! Get me out, please! Oh, <laughs> that that was almost the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I call this part the, the sideways frogger section, because, uh, yeah. Jank station. A lot of jank can happen here. Yeah. Th there's, in in my first of the two 106 runs I've done, in the time trial for this level, I got stuck in, like, the, um, in between the cars at the very end, and I did the thing where you could, like, hook jump into a double jump and got out of it. But yeah, no, that's a, that's a terrifying level. Spicy fried mystery food? Basically sushi. Hey, it's Tim. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a theory at one point where uh, the the spicy fried mystery food that uh, Tana mentions could be the Schnurgel, Tim the Cat. Yeah, it, it, in the in the cutscene that we're gonna skip in this level, they do mention eating like Schnurgel meat. So. So yeah, rip Tim the Cat. This is probably. One of the like least function uh, functioning levels. I don't know. One of the uh, least uh, fun levels to move Cortex in, I would say, because it requires a lot of like precision, and he's not really that great for that. C Cortex's kit definitely works much better in 2D. So like these 2D parts are perfectly fine. Um, but then when you have the like that 3D part at the end or at the beginning and like a little bit at the end, it, it can get a little finicky. Right here, we're gonna backtrack for the gem because we activated that exclamation mark box. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hug the right wall. And if you guys see, those platforms are not moving because I just did a cycle in it. Usually, they're moving. Uh, and when you get here, they're moving close to one another. I didn't know that. I'm taking that. Oh, that's sick, actually. Because normally you have to wait a whole cycle here. Cortex is shooting at the screen. I like to call this the uh, trash can section, but the trash section. That's actually really impressive. Yeah, that was good. So this section's scary because like these falling cubes or whatever can like snipe you. Like they're consistent in when they fall, but if you're not paying attention, they can just hit you. And if you hold one of the, if you hug one of the walls, they will just never hit you. This is big horn energy. Oh yeah, I actually forgot about it. I, for, I thought this was just a Cortex level for a moment. You for gore. I for gore. Yeah, so there's, uh, not counting the TNTs, there's 11 crates you have to break here. And now because we were super fast at getting up here, we have to wait until these last two boxes. And now that it should be all the boxes. Nice. There's a little visual glitch that can happen here in any percent that doesn't happen in ACG, where if you finish the level while you're still on one of the flying luggage, Coco or Crash will like get into the center and then just immediately fly off the screen. I was about to mention that. I feel that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. I've tried doing it in ACG, um, but there's just no luggage. Like after the last box, there's just no. Uh, 
there's no yeah there's no platform that comes in the middle also we're back here still yeah that's a thing with it's supposed to drop you off at the next hub because like you're hitchhiking on cortex's blimp um but on the pc version you just stay back there for some reason oh yo look at that it's, it's not isn't that great now we're in the last hub Bonafide 10. The dialogue in this last hub is just, like, peak writing. It's so funny. Um, Cortex dialogue in general yeah. is so great. For, for context on the plot at this point, um, at the end of the crate escape, uh, Cortex realizes, hey, I can take the time mask and go back in time to undo my greatest mistake, making Crash Bandicoot. Um, so this entire hub takes place right before Crash 1. And Crash and Coco are trying to stop Cortex from stopping himself from creating Crash. And uh, the past Cortex doesn't believe that current Cortex is from the future and thinks he's an imposter. So they just they spend the entire hub just arguing with each other like an old married couple. You know, um, typical Cortex things. Yeah. Also, a uh, very minor but important thing to note is that in the section right before this cookie was supposed to lose the ika ika mask but there's a there was an oversight where you could walk to the left and there's no invisible wall and it dodges the trigger where you lose this and the entire like like next section of this level is significantly easier and faster with this mask so and then there's 12 crates here they asked to break the last one but just double checking this is what I mentioned in the beginning of the run, where sometimes we take the masks past where they are supposed to be. Yeah. As Rico just uh, explained to you in the video. There's a lot more of that happening in any percent, but like there are instances of it in ACG like this right here. So now you can kind of just like go back and forth and kind of skip sections, and it's really nice. Vortex have a weird voice, guys. And because of EK, you can just massively corner cut that section. Yeah, like this entire section maskless is uh, much harder. So. And this part as well. Yeah, the wolves betrayed you earlier, so why, tr why trust them now? Yeah, on uh, on the PS5 version, they actually did patch the uh, the ability to take Ika Ika this far, so that's one of the that's one of the places where PS5 loses time compared to PC. And that entire section is much more annoying. Oh, that will lose quite some time in any percent then. Uh, in any percent, you can still do the full skip. Oh, okay. Because uh, they, they patched out the old version of the skip, uh, but they didn't patch out the Crody skip. Oh, okay. How could you forget Crody? No, I just wasn't around when Crody skip was found. Another thing to note with these like sections where Cookie's going against the current of these slopes, uh, not in this part, but in earlier parts, he was able to walk on the side where there was no like water, and it, it saves time because it's not fighting current. Like he can do it right in this part as well, like that. Now for the level. The level. The level of all time. I don't know if I would call it that, but it's definitely a level. One of the levels of all time. <laughs> so uh, this is Toxic Tunnels. This is the longest level in the run. Um, also, that's a shout out to Sinksinator and Crash 3. We're right at the start. There's four crates off screen. Evil, really. Yeah, kind of. There are, there is some levels in Crash 4 where they hide a few boxes at the start, but it's not a lot. So you, at this point, I think the last one is fossil fueled. So at this point, uh, so after like fossil fuel, you might check every level to see if there's anything. And it's just such a long time that there's no level with boxes that you might get to toxic tunnels and forget. So okay. this is the uh, multicolored gem path we were talking about. Um, 
this is probably the bane of a lot of casual players completion of runs. But it is the literally easiest part about this level in speedruns. Yeah, it... Uh, the, the only thing that's really brutal about this section is that there is not a single checkpoint in it. If he dies at any point in any of these four sections of the route, uh, he has to go back to the beginning of it. Every single, I guess, gem platform section is tied to a cycle. So no, no matter what I do, so even here I have to wait for this, no matter what I do, I will, I will always hit the exact same cycle every time. There's nothing I can do to get a faster cycle. I feel like this room in particular is uh, scary because sometimes if you if you just jump on these like walk like arrow walls at the wrong time, it can just completely not work. Now this mask we want to hold as much as we can because. Optimally, we're going to use this mask in the bonus. But it's very hard to get a hold of this mask as a bonus. It's not for, what, three minutes? Yeah. That's another thing that makes this level very hard, is that like there's very important damage strats in the bonus. And, uh, yeah, again, this is the longest level in the run. So... You have to hold this for quite a while. Thankfully, the blue gem section of this path is uh, quite easy. Little shout out to Koala Kong on the side of the cart. And thankfully, when you leave that path, it does count as a checkpoint. So now, if Cookie dies, he doesn't have to do it again. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, casually one of the scariest parts of the level, if not the absolute scariest. Seems to remember taking a few hours. <laughs> yeah, no, going, going for the perfect Please. relic took me quite a while. Hopefully, we get a snipe here. Gonna bring up the box counter. And there we go. Went from 121 to 122. Shoutouts to the two boxes that just don't have any Wumpas in them. Just empty. There's some cute little cycle skipping you can do here. Oh, oh, oh. Well. It, it's very hard to carry that mask all the way to this bonus. So, like, oftentimes you just will not have it for the strats in here, which is unfortunate, but... I will try to do a recent-ish strat that was found uh, to break the nitros a little bit more safe. Let's see if I get it. Inside. It is a very finicky, that strat. I'm definitely not consistent at it. Time for me to read a couple of messages. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. I just want to remind chat that as we're coming into the last part of this run, the donations are going towards Alzheimer Fondant, but also on the side, all donations from $5 upwards also become eligible for prizes. And we have a huge list of prizes available. Um, go to prizes.esamarathon.com to see the full list of everything that's available to you for any donation. That is, that is directly sent to Alzheimer Fondant. We are really hoping we can hit 50K before the end of this run, so get your donations in now, get them sent in, and let's carry on with the run. 
thank you for the messages. Uh, even if I'm having this mask here, for some reason, these cards, if you get hit by them through in the front, they will instantly kill you. Which, w which is not the case for the mine cards that are in the red gym path. Yeah, it's very odd. I uh, love those damage reasons, like uh, yeah. body slam into a bound. Got some more uh, wonderful Cortex dialogue coming up here. What must I do to prove myself? Mama's name, Sharon. Childhood pet, Rob with googly eyes. Favorite food, buttered noodles. But Rob was fine. Henrio, change the password to my diary. This brute has been snooping. Hopefully I get the one to jam around here. I think there's another mystery box, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right. there's two. Yeah, and even with like the amount of people in this level, it's still extremely tight. Suzy Cookie okay, almost had like 1100. Yeah, I also believe it's impossible to get it without doing the multicolored gem path. So if like he were to somehow miss it, he would have to just go through that again. Uh, so this is the last main level, but it's not the last level overall. There's one more timeline level after this. Um, Probably think this is one of the better levels that ever made. Like this is yeah, um, this is... So I feel like this level, Cortex Castle and Toxic Tunnels, are a really nice dichotomy together. Where Toxic Tunnels is a level where you, you don't use any masks, so it just tests your knowledge of Crash and Coco specifically. Uh, this level is filled to the brim with the quantum mask usage for all four of them and it tests your knowledge of and mastery of the quantum masks so both of them together are just like a fantastic final gauntlet the last part of this level is truly a final gauntlet yes where you have to use all the masks basically like back to back to back to back uh, with different obstacles definitely uh, one of the reasons that this game is a very difficult is the amount of inputs that you need to do in, sh in such a short amount of time. Another quick, uh, Quick question round. Favorite quantum mask? That's hard. <laughs> I'd say it's, for me, it's definitely Akano. I, I feel like for me, it's either Akano or Kapunawa. Kapunawa for me. Gonna hit those boxes through the wall. Both casually and speed, I think Kapunawa is just great. Well, Akano casually doesn't bring me too much, but I also see why it's cool, because, like, speed-wise, Akano is actually amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, I actually did not know you could go faster than the, than the Saucer. You're just too fast. Take it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it was that and the the double, the, the, the second triple mask that crash landed. Yep. So, uh... So when we meant Final Gauntlet, uh, just watch this. I wanted to optimally hold on to that mask, uh, because there's some lasers that you can just go through them. And I was planning on using the mask for that. It's not all lasers that can go through them. Some uh, will take away a mask, and some will just insta-kill you. So because I don't have a mask, I have to go for this little skip. To avoid having to wait for the platform. I have to be very careful with the jump that I do uh, when I'm on top of the boxes because there's a super close death lane. That was, very, those. That was very nice, by the way, and deserves applause. That, that, that section is uh, very, very brutal for a first-time player of this game. Being double. 
Um, I don't really have too much to say about this level. This is a very janky level when it comes. Let's see. Um, so this bat right here, there's just a chance that he will just not move. Is it random? It, it is it's random. Oh, okay. I've tried to look for a trigger on to see like if I somehow sometimes skip a trigger for him to activate, but I've never found anything. Yeah, because I know exactly what you're talking about. The, the, he will be like under and you can't hit him, right? Yeah. It I, can happen to both of the bats. I had, like, yeah, this, like one. this one. I had a 100 percent run where the, the first bat like locked like t five times in a row and back then we didn't know of a way to uh, like unlock him without starting the level over. Is there a way to unlock him? Uh the first one no. Okay. Like there is like the way to unlock him is to just Hit him three times, so he goes to stone, turns to gel, and turns back to normal. But for the first one, we actually have to abuse coyote time a lot, because if you just normally shoot, the shots will go over him. On this part, I will try to shoot the left side bat twice to avoid having to use the right side one. Pretty good for the session. And then uh, this is the, the ending of uh, Cortex Castle. Extremely, extremely similar, so we got a donation. It's a good time for it. We do. We have a $5 donation coming from Flippy, who says, huge congratulations on your first ESA appearance, Cookie. This run was a blast. It's still going on, so I'm going to say is a blast and will continue to be a blast. Really appreciate the, the kind messages of every donor. Is that the word? Yes. That is the word, yes. Sometimes I forgot how to English. <laughs> and now, because in this part there there isn't a mask, uh, I have to do the exact same thing. The little jump he does in the middle of that is important because if you the the balancing craze can actually kill you if you're just trying to walk through them. Yeah, they go so fast that if you just hold right and casually walk. Uh, you can clip through the boxes with the with how fast they're going. Yeah, that was the last level, which means he has all 228 clear gems. So all he has now is the final boss. Yoink! Yoink! Oh! Sheesh! Coco, where are you going? It's the big horn energy. In this final boss fight, Cortex steals all the masks from you, and in every phase, except the first one, he's gonna use them against you. Bonnie Loli isn't you know, anything that particular. Also, with these Shootomatics, uh, the amount of time they take to come up is RNG, so I always what I just try to do is I always try to uh, preemptively body slam, but sometimes I get uh, bad RNG and they take that long to come out. I can smell your boiling. So while we're seeing this last boss fight uh, unfold, I can say that if you enjoy this run or uh, any other uh, HD crash runs that we have. We do have, uh, or OG crash, we do have multiple Discord servers. One for the OG version, so up until NST and NST and beyond. Um, if you want to run them, they are on speedrun.com for their respective games, and you can join there, and uh, all your questions will be answered, basically. Uh, we are very welcoming to new members, and uh, yeah, hope to see you there. Also follow this man. This man. <laughs> <laughs> um, now with this part, I'm gonna try and not use the the platforms that you're meant to use by doing a this very precise jump. Nice. Oh, that's good. That, that, is, that is not an easy jump. That's definitely that's the last very scary thing in the run. It's definitely easy to mess that up with uh, nerves if you're coming to this. Boss fight in PB pace. And I think it loses like 15 seconds to die or around that, yeah. 
Now, the last four hits of Cortex's health is all in this phase, and time is coming up as soon as the fourth lab assistant hits Cortex, and that's time. Very nice. <laughs> I love how Cookie just sits back as if, yeah, I just did that. <laughs> what is that time? That's a... 2.37.35. Uh, RT. Yeah, I don't know how long the loads are for this, but they usually around the ballpark of uh, 10 to 12 minutes, so 2.27, 2.26. It's a pretty good run for a marathon. Yeah, that's more than good. That's uh, still like world record, or like <laughs> for you, basically. Yeah. It's better than second place, is what I'm trying to say. So I modest. So it's modest. better than my loadless <laughs> okay. PB. Like uh, ten minutes. At least the level that I had to repeat uh, was an interesting level where there's a a pretty cool skip that you use in any percent. So I'm not too bothered about that. Yeah, thanks ESA for having us. Uh, multiple times. Any shout outs, Cookie? Um, I want to shout out just the whole community, uh, the whole Crash HD community. It was super welcoming when I started running NST back in July 2020. And it was just everyone was so welcoming. Everyone is very fun uh, to hang with. I want to especially thank Mirakaz and Rico for commentating this run with me and to definitely alleviate the nerves. And also a shout out to the other community leader that's missing here, which is Crody, because uh, he definitely does a lot of work uh, behind the scenes. That is definitely uh, people, view chatters and viewers that just see the run definitely um, miss out on every everything that uh, Skip uh, skip hunters, glitch hunters do, and Crowley is definitely a person that puts effort into every single Crash game. Cookie, I can assure you that Crody has been here with us the whole time. <laughs> yeah, um, watching, yeah. watching on the stream, I know that for sure. Cookie, Rico, and Merkez, thank you so much for that awesome run. This has been Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. And I just want to say thank you so much um, for just the, the sheer amount of, not only the donations that are coming, but from the, the, the concentration that was required there, Cookie, was absolutely incredible. And it, it was amazing to see it from here. Coming up next at ESA Winter 23, we have Kingdom Hearts Final Mix HD. With, uh, we've got 97 aims running it, and I think, Rico, you're staying with us to commentate. I, I am, I've got a very long commentary block tonight. Uh, you absolutely do, so stick around, you'll see some more Rico, you'll see 97 aims, and you will see Kingdom Hearts Final Mix HD after this short intermission.